do that flex, do that, like, do people do, like, pull-ups while they're waiting? I don't know, I wish I had a pull-up bar to do it. Okay, three, two, one... Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the b and stream today, on the 6th of March 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week, and will have a wonderful week ahead. Uh, I've had a rather good week, bar one thing that completely irritated me, and perhaps... Perhaps it is a bit of drama that I shall speaketh about on the internet and uh, completely, you know, I don't know, is it going to aggravate people? I guess. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Maybe. Or not. It's not that important, to be honest. Uh, but other than that, this week's been pretty good. I played a bunch of games and I also want to talk about that more importantly than drama because nothing is less important than drama. Uh, but other than that, how about we jump right into the video game? It's a game in particular. Check it out, it's a game- oh my gosh, I yelled that one. It's a Game Boy game! Look at this! It's amazing, because it's by Amaze Entertainment. And there's the massive Warner Brothers logo. Uh, so as I've mentioned on the this, this stream alert, uh... From the developers of The Herbs came to you three years before Harry Potter and the <coughs> Sorcerer's Stone, I mean the Philosopher's Stone, if you are anywhere but the US who cannot say the word Philosophers. Can you spell it? I don't know. But uh, this is, uh, over the last two weeks I played the PlayStation version and uh, I knew ahead of time and I thought it would be kind of interesting to go, what is this about? What is the Game Boy Color version about? Because every version of the game is different. And I thought we'd start with three of the games. And I think the Game Boy Color version serves as a really interesting second title to play. Because unlike the kind of adventure -y aspect of the uh, PlayStation game and the PS1 Hagrid and all the fun memes associated, this is perhaps not what you're expecting out of a Game Boy game. Or maybe it's exactly what you're expecting because you know what you're in for. So, how about I start the game? That's a new game. Stuff the the original slot. Stuff it. Alright, I'm gonna try my best to do some voices. Dear Mr. Potter, you have been accepted to the School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You have to say, I'm a stuff <coughs> It must. <laughs> Welcome to Diagon Alley, Harry. I've never seen a place like this before. That's because there's nothing like it. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna kill my voice for doing this. This is Ollivander's one shot. He's a pirate now. And as you can see by the sign, I'll go in and see till you're getting a wand. You can explore a bit if you like before you join me inside. Now, I played the first t two minutes of this game. And the weirdest part is that you can indeed walk around and you can go into a bunch of these shops and literally the guy is just like, Hi young man, are you a first year student? I will be soon. Hey, shove off. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. And on top of that, just bonus points. You go on the pause menu. You got no money. You got no sickles right there. Harry is walking into these stores, and not only can he not afford anything, he's also not even the demographic. Granted, he will be the demographic. I believe you can also unlock famous witches and wizards cards if you hunt around and press the A button. I've never really played this game at all. And people are already giving me tips about w defeating weak monsters now, and I'll be able to defeat stronger monsters later. Like, oh, okay, I guess. Sure. Uh, I should have read the manual, actually, before playing this one, because uh, a lot of games of this time, especially if I'm playing them blind, there's gonna be stuff that they just say. There is $5 in, in the pot, though. Uh, they're gonna say things, and I'll be like, oh, okay. Sure. Fine. Uh... Your guess is as good as mine, what a, what a cauldron's used for. But, uh, I think Hagrid is kind of like, oh, explore around town if you like before joining me. I don't think there's anything before joining him, like, at all. So you join. Hello, Harry. This is Mr. Ollivander. He set you up with a wand bar. Come find me later at Gringotts Bank. Oh my gosh, there he goes. There's only one wand for every wizard. We'll have to test a few before we find yours. Try this one first. I was gonna sneeze. Achoo! Obviously not the right one for you. Maybe you'll have better luck with this one. Okay. Oh, 
Still not working! You must need a very special one! Hmm, I have an idea! Try this one, it's made of holly with a phoenix feather core! Oh! We found one, just the one for you! Harry Potter is equipped with the spells for Pendulum, Vermidilius, Vigilius, and then, you know. <laughs> you gotta you gotta say you know every time you say it. Or is it Uno? Which will protect you in magic encounters. I can't pay for it though! Hagrid has arranged for 119 sickles to be charged to your account at Gringotts. Thank you for stopping by, I'm sure you'll put your wand to good use. Bro, like, put your wand to good- You're going to school, wizard school, it's like not being able to afford pens. And there he is, a happy kid. You have received your wand, the most necessary equipment of any witch or wizard. You can now cast the first of many spells you will learn. Cool. And now we leave. And some, some dingy kid comes up to, Hey, aren't you Harry Potter? Uh, well, you are, are you? And if you're here, it means you're finally going to Hogwarts. Does anyone know anything about everything about me? Oh my gosh. This is going to be great. Harry Potter and Hogwarts. Is there anything I could do for you? Do you need any famous witches and wizard cards? I don't, I don't know. What are they? Oh, they're the best. They're cards you collect and trade. And you can make the card combinations that create magic. Sounds better than playing solitaire. <laughs> Harry, you gotta play more games. At least spider solitaire, come on bro. I used to do that a lot. I have a lot of spare cards. I'd be honored to give you some of them. There are four different decks you can collect. Here, pick the one you want to start with. I, I'm surprised I'm not even going with any British accent. Now, as someone who has no idea who these people are, let alone what the decks even do. Oh, we got Justice Pillywickle. Gulliver Pokebee? Pokebee? Pokebye? Pokebee? Hey, there's the... There's the spam message. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks for the, the drive-by. Uh, Moen the Malicious. Um, you got Doge in the name of your website as well. That's a... That's an interesting one. That's a, that's a flashback and a half. We're going with Moen. Because Moen is malicious. This deck looks interesting. There are two- Oh my gosh, I forgot this guy's voice. There are two more things you'll need. One's a Folio Magi, where you store your card collection. Oh, thanks bro. The other thing you'll need is a Folio Triplicus. You store your card combinations in it. I'll even throw in a couple of combinations for free. Oh my gosh. And then it gives you stuff, and stuff, and stuff, and stuff, and st <laughs> Thank you, it's very generous. I was glad to do it, but it went down until I, I tell the guys I helped Harry Potter. Okay, so you can bring up the start menu to view them. Now, I'm not too sure if this is just me, but in the screen you've got your Folio, Magi, Magi, and your Triplicus. And in this it shows like you got a, a check saying, yeah, you can activate this card. I, when I was doing my, my brief testing, I don't know, I activated the card combo and then I could never activate it ever again. And I don't know if that burns it out forever. Because you got numbers here, you can see I've got like one, one, two. I'm not too sure if these are one time uses and I just burn them all up. I also burn them up on these rat. there used to be rats here. Something written on the door. Enter stranger, but take heed of what awaits in the sin of greed. For those who take but do not earn, may pay dearly in their turn. That is a very ominous thing about, about the bank. Uh, now, the other thing I heard is that, uh, like most great RPGs, it's gonna be a grind. Listen, I, this is what, like, there's an enemy. You're about to enter a magical encounter, woo, and have learned several options. Spell lets you cast a spell. Item allows you to use an item. Card lets you create a card effect with famous witches and wizards cards. And Flea lets you attempt to escape from the encounter. Your stamina and magic points are shown in the display to the right. Thanks for the explanation, game. And then they just dump you in. Uh, but this game is, uh, well, as some people describe, it's Final Fantasy, and I would say it might be a bit too simple, but I see the similarities. You got your guys on the right, or just Harry, and in fact, I think only ever Harry. You got uh, stamina points and magic. You can cast spells and it causes the enemies to run away if they drop health. Harry gains experience, he gains money because the rats had money, and he gets food, which he will definitely not, like, second-guess eating. Uh, 
But yeah, you could use a card combination. I'm going to choose not to. I assume the pumpkin passes as well. Uh, like, like all good Game Boy games, they don't tell you what the items do. So, I might be in a bit of guesswork right here, but I'm under the impression that if this game is uh, too hard, you just kind of gain a few levels and suddenly it becomes not hard. Some of these guys give nine sickles. That's actually a, a wonderful phrase, nine sickles. Um, you see me cause a vermin... Vermil, vermilion. Hold on, what's the, what's the name of the spell? Vermilius, sorry. Uh, from what I believe, and this is actually from me, having the third game as a younger lad on the GBA, and the third game is still by the same devs. They did three of them. Good on them. Uh, but, uh, in that one, um, yeah, basically different enemies are weak to different, uh, attacks. Different kinds of spells. And then the, the Uno, we'll get Duo and, and Trey? I think it's Trey at the end. Oh, there you go. Look at the Look at that. 11 health. I had 40 to start off, and I'm just, boom, straight up to 51. Uh, I don't know if anything affects your stats beyond just the level. As in, sorry, as in, if you actually get randomized stats, or whether it's just, you know. These are the, the stats I get for this level. This guy. Let's think about the shopkeeper too, so they're all honest. Oh, thanks, bro. I love that fade effect. That fade effect is super neat. Like, it, it when, when you get into, like, Game Boy hardware, you realize that, like, frame offsets, not frame offsets, but, like, buffer offsets are decently easy. Although, I will say, this background effect is pretty neat, because it's clearly doing two, like, panning images on top of each other. It's actually kind of neat. Um, and yes, the overworld does run at half the frame rate. It's just kind of interesting. I guess one thing if I was to critique right away, I'd say the music doesn't scream out Harry Potter. That guy gave two experience and one sickles. It was not worth it. Although I guess I did fight two rats in the previous ones. Sometimes they just take no damage as well. You're gonna love that. You can... And also, that is the game slowing down a little bit. It does feel that this game might be a bit too much. Um, I also mentioned the herbs, uh, earlier, and that is because I have also played the herbs. I've played two versions of the herbs. I've played, uh, it on the, uh, I think I played the GameCube version all the way through. Um, as well as also the DS version, and the GBA version is the same as the DS version. But, uh, the herbs was a launch title that perhaps I'll get around to, because I think it's actually a, uh, weird release. But I also think that a lot of the games by... This dev, or the studio, Grip Tonight Games. A lot of their games are actually kind of weirdly interesting. Maybe not amazing, but weirdly interesting. So you're going to see me get a bit of experience because uh, there's other, there's one other thing that I want to grab, and it requires me to buy 30 boots. 30 whole boots. Now that sounds like a lot, but uh, the boots cost five sickles each. So it just means I need 150 extra sickles, which is kind of like double the amount I think I'm going to need to be getting anyways. Um, but the only other thing I know really going, I keep saying, the only other thing I know, and then it's like something that kind of like keeps me tight for the next like hour of the game. And it's not too long a game as well. Uh, I love how I just casted that spell with no magic. I don't know if anything happens if Harry dies as well, because in testing I walked into the next area, let Harry die, and then he just kind of, like, fell over and reappeared back out here. So, I don't know. Oh boy, I do wish this was a bit faster, though, I'll tell you that. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, it's, it's, a uh, it's definitely an RPG, and it's definitely, uh, got a lot of colors for a Game Boy Color game. Like, I know it's a Game Boy Color, like, I should be expecting the color. But, like, there's a surprising amount of, like, detail on screen right now. The only thing I guess you could really critique on is Harry's sprite is maybe a bit, uh... I don't know, though. You look at that, take a good guess, it is Harry Potter. And then the sprite at the bottom right. They did an alright job. 
Six and nine, nice. Uh, so, this is gonna catch me out if I don't have any magic. I know, right? No magic points in a magic game. But what you can do is that there's a band-aid shop here. And perhaps, I don't know if there's gonna be more through the game, but this, this, uh, lady's just like, uh, I can see that you are hurt. Would you like me to heal you? Uh, yeah, what do you charge? There is no charge. It is my duty to heal all who ask. Thank you. And then you drink the green juice. And Harry hates it. And then he drinks it. Absolute champ. But he's completely healed. So, uh, this chick is kind enough to... You know, not... <laughs> have a shop with no... No income. Amazing job. But sure. That's really all, like... All I can say to start off this game, but you know what? I think a lot of RPGs, it's the long game. It's the the you know, how does it expand over time? And uh, I definitely think there's going to be some interesting set pieces on this one compared to, uh, well, maybe the other ones, all of the other ones. Uh, but how about let let's get into some games that I've played before I even get into any. News or what? No stat increases. I was expecting a minus on one of these. Well, I got agility, but it's not as exciting, you know? You don't get much magic, so uh, let's go with the uh, the games in terms of their release order, I feel. I just got less money off that rat than any of the other ones. Uh, the oldest game I played through this week was Act Razor on the SNES. This was the uh, first title released by the developer Quintet and published by Enix on the SNES in 1990 or 1991. I can't tell. The game uses both years in game. I think it's probably 91. Uh, Act Razor starts off as a. Uh, ooh, hello there, Mister. Oh my gosh, let me try to take a take a stab at your name. Far beyond. Did I get it? Fabiod. If, if that's if that's a, a, a <laughs> an insult, let me know. But uh, I hope I tried my best on that one. Um, and uh, yes, ooh, is that a? Oh, I lost my mouse. Is that a uh, flipendo spell emote? Whose chat is that one from? That's gonna be curious when I get around to that one. But I should have put blind in the title. I really should have, because yeah, I've I've not actually played this one all the way through. Or really, any other way through. All I know is you fight rats at the beginning. But uh, I'm getting I'm getting money for my boots. I need my boots. Also, there's crits. So, uh, so yeah. So X Razor. It starts off as a. Uh, I mean, I feel like I don't know how to describe platformers well enough. So I was about to call it a by-the-books platformer, but someone is going to tell me that Act Razor's platforming has a lot of intricacies. It's, let's just say, it's a platform where you play as a knight kind of person. Uh, you got a sword, the sword kind of swings one way, but you can do like a jump attack, you can do a crouch attack. Cool stuff like that. I really like the platforming because uh, you can um, fairly easily dodge attacks. You can, um, you get a lot of hits. You can, you can withstand a lot of attacks. Uh, you're not really expected to... You get you get more mobility than you'd expect. Um, so it works pretty okay. At the end of uh, every level, there's a, um, a boss. And the boss uh, has a bit of a decent health boss. Some of the bosses are a little annoying. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the... Uh, there's one boss... Uh, I think it was the first boss of the second world. Because uh, each, each world is broken into two acts. The first boss of the second world was just an absolute slog. It would keep ducking around, going all over the place. Um, some of the bosses were a bit trickier, but generally none of it was impossible to really uh, approach. Um, you also get access to various magic spells throughout the game, but you end up not using them too much because you have to use a scroll to... Um, to cast the magic, and you only really find scrolls in the level, so you're not going to be really having many magic uses. And you start off with none, and you also don't start off with any magic until a bit later in the game as well. Uh, but they're basically like a bit of a free screen clear kind of ability. But I ended up not using them too much, so it ended up just being a bit more of a direct platformer. 
that is until you beat the first level and suddenly the game goes hi we are two inhabitants and we have founded this city in this place but can you help us terraform the land and clear all the things around us and suddenly it turns into uh, a god game basically you're suddenly playing as this angel you can shoot uh, in four directions you got to shoot these flying things that are terrorizing the the townspeople underneath you you've got to point the townspeople into building their city in various directions uh, you know clear the land use some god abilities to uh, you know clear bushes or you know uh, dry up rain or stuff like that uh, or cause rain to, to you know provide moisture to the land that kind of stuff and uh, it was really like it's a bit of whiplash when it comes to the genre I'm just like whoa because uh, both modes are fairly separate but the one thing that joins them is that as a reward for doing uh, the the god game, you gain uh, population. The population is directly your experience points. As you gain more population, you'll occasionally level up and you'll gain more health, which ends up being a godsend when you get to the, the platforming bits. And uh, and on top of that, I kind of like this um, like the kind of story that you get. It's not a deep story. It's not really even like. A ton of stuff happens but it's stuff that you're directly involved with where like a group of townspeople it's like oh our son Billy got lost in a cave can you find him or like uh, there's another one which is like uh, oh like you know we've some some of our townspeople have wandered into this pyramid and suddenly have turned to evil deeds can you investigate like that kind of stuff where like you're at least investigating it you feel like you're helping out even if you know, the text prompts are super simple and everyone kind of looks the same. Uh, but it's... yeah, it's done pretty alright. Pretty alright. I think that there's a little bit of a quirkiness with the, um... With the, uh... The overworld combat, it's a bit too simple and it somewhat relies on waiting a bit too much. Like, once you've cleared out all the camps of enemies, uh... You're then prompted to, um you know, take on the the world again, and this time this will be the second act level of platforming that you do. Um, and, uh, you'd kind of go back to the city, because sometimes they might have something you need, or sometimes you might just go, hey, I want to, like, top up the, the area and max out my experience, and uh, there's not really anything competing against you, and on top of that, it's not like... You know, it's not like there's any planning with your city building. It's just kind of, you know, expand out in all the directions, clear all the land, and you're, you're done. You're good. Maybe earthquake to destroy the, the less uh, dense buildings. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also like, it is a SNES game, and I don't really want to rip on a SNES game for doing two kinds of game concepts remarkably well, but just like, oh, they're a bit quirky in how they interact. Um, like, I feel like for what it attempts to do, it's a really interesting combo, at the very least. And I can't say either one is particularly worse than the other. I'd maybe say the platforming's a, bit, a little bit more fun. Uh, my only thing with the platforming is there's uh, 12 levels, which is a decent amount of levels, and also given that you got to do the city building as equally uh, as much of the game, that's a fair bit of content for a SNES platformer. I'll definitely say that. Um, oh, look at that, Vermilius. So yeah, I guess as I gain more levels, I'll also gain more spells. So here's Verm Oh, it's, it's Stuart. <laughs> well, it's, I, I, I was looking at the two words going, huh, what? So that duo might come in very handy if these rats didn't take one hit, but perhaps soon. Uh, I think also I am going to... I'm nearly, I'm nearly there when it comes to my boots. I'm going to buy 31 because I want to wear one. So, 155 sickles. That's all I ask for. Um, but yeah, i definitely give it a try. I played the SNES version, and there exists a Android version, an Android iOS version, that got a Steam slash Switch... Uh, slash console release in 2021. It is 45 bucks, it is a lot of dollar, but it is an interesting game, and I would definitely say you will find it's unique. It's really, it's kind of weird and interesting. So, 
uh, give it a try. My only real, like, big gripe is that the end of the game kind of comes at you real hard. It's a bit of a boss rush ending, and, uh, the bosses aren't particularly, like, easy to dodge. But they do give you a lot of health. And I think it's a bit of just, like, can you just, wow, okay, I would need more than one sickles. Um, it's a bit of just perseverance and trying to minimize your hits at least a bit. Uh, but it's not, like, brutally hard, except in some bosses that just feel like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, interestingly, the boss rush mode, uh, at the end doesn't have, um, it's only got six of the bosses of the game. Now, there were 12 levels, and they only picked six of them. I think that's probably a specific six, like, maybe it's all the, the Act 2 bosses. And in doing so, I kind of felt, mm, maybe some of the Act 1 bosses were harder. Who knows? Well, I've definitely got enough money, so how about let's give you a... Okay, never mind, this one rat wants to... Or three rats. Want to get in on the, the piece. Uh... Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting game. Not a, not a particularly hard one, it's also got a battery save, so if you're concerned about, uh... You know, playing a SNES game that goes on for too long, just note you can save between levels, and it's fairly forgiving in the sense of if you die, you just go back to the me to the menu, and you can retry, like, a stage, basically. Uh, it's like, you got three lives, uh, lose a life, you go back to the beginning of the screen, lose all three lives, you gotta go back to the beginning of the level. That is a super duper fair way of doing lives and, and checkpoints. 100% cool with it, so. I don't have any huge gripes, and if anything, yeah, it feels fresh, which is amazing to say about a 30-year-old game. I'm not saying games don't do that, but it's just good to experience a game that actually does feel fresh. So thank you, my broski. Uh, so I believe the Booch, Boots and Cat shop is over here. You can tell they're the Boots and Cat shop because they have a picture of a cloak. Uh, so all I remember is there were plain boots and I'm gonna buy... Well, actually, were there better boots? I don't know what all these items are as well. There's just, like, a lot of items. I'm gonna buy 31 of these. And someone's gonna tell me off, but this was a thing I looked up and I can only buy 25 at a time. Cool. Someone's gonna tell me that's super wasteful, but trust me, I think... I think I've got I've got what it takes, so I'm gonna equip the boots. Uh, so here you go. They reduce my agility a little bit, but I am a bit stronger, and I shall take that as a win. And you can save in the menu, so that's nice and quick. Let's go visit uh, Haggy Rids in the bank. Why are there holes in the ground? Who did this? And there's people wandering around, which is just like oh, the shops will buy back what you sell. And it reduced price, like, oh, okay, sure, I guess. Look at these elves. Dwa no, the, the goblins. Mr. Hagrid is waiting for you at the far end of the building. Mr. Hagrid and Mr. Griphook have been waiting for you. Oh, because I was killing rats for a, for a while. Props to them, they wrote different lines of dialogue in every single one of these guys. Almost every single one of them. Almost every single one. Okay. This room's a lot bigger than it was on the PlayStation version, I'll tell you that. Hello, Harry! Good morning. <laughs> my voice is short, so... Uh, we're gonna give him a short voice. Good morning, Mr. Potter. My name is Griphook. We'd like to see Harry's vault now. Arr. Have you his key, sir? Here it is, and there's also the matter of the you-know-what we talked about before. Oh, this seems to be in order. Please follow me. I'm pretty sure one of the one of the the guys does have a really shrill voice like that. Stay together, please. Come on, Harry. And then Harry's just like, ooh, Hagrid, wait for me. And he's lost them already. Amazing. And double amazingly, uh, there's rats, bats, everything in here. And the bats. I mean, they're bats. I also don't know if the bat. I don't think the bats are weak to Vermilion. They're not weak to Vermilion Core. They're just... They do have a bit more health, but they're not... 
I think they're actually weak to Flipendo, just they sometimes take it and sometimes they don't. Gringotts vaults are really safe! Okay. Oh my gosh, that enemy was not there a frame ago. So I guess you could say, well, why didn't you walk around in here? And that is a mildly good question, but I wanted the boots. That is important. And if I die, I just end up outside and we'll just try again. You know, that kind of stuff, so... So let's go on to game number two. Uh, I guess in chronological order of release, this was a 2012 release. I played... This one's gonna be some... Again, some whiplash for some people. I played Jetpack Joyride on the PSP. Jetpack Joyride is a mobile game by actually Australian developer Half Brick Studios. Uh, this was a fairly popular mobile game. I remember playing it way back in the day. Um, and it's as much as you remember. It's a pretty neat, just kind of like endless scroller uh, where you tap the screen and the guy shoots his jetpack to move up and you let go and he falls down. And uh, so many locked doors. Um, and uh, your job is to dodge lasers, uh, pick up coins, pick up uh, bonus tokens, that kind of stuff, and uh, eventually just go as far as you can while picking up coins, basically. And you use the coins to buy upgrades in the shop, which will help you go further. Um, actually, do any of them help you go further, or do they just... I think they just help you get more coins, now I think about it. Gosh, more stamina, more defense. Well, I can keep going up. Even Hagrid could not lock that. Hagrid is not known for his lock picking skills. So few keys. I don't know where I'm going, so that's a good sign. Um, but. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an endless scroller. It doesn't really have a ton of content. I guess the thing to note is that, uh, and, and one way for them to contextualize the gameplay a bit, is to encourage you to do these missions. Uh, so when you play the game, you get three active missions, and uh, they might be like, pick up so many coins, uh, high-five so many of the people along the ground of the game, or like, you can't get in, but at least you don't have to try to get out. Oh my gosh. Also, look at this thing. Oh my goodness! Rat, rat, he is the any he attacks first. That's amazing. Let's get him with the duo. See how he likes it. Ooh! Alright, you know he's a boss because he's got his own music. Although it is the same theme. It's the same theme. Also, was that half his health already? Yeah, that was. I mean, granted, I guess this uses like a quarter of my magic, so I'm kind of expecting it to do a lot of damage anyways. But, uh, that's what I get for grinding on the first boss. Oh well. I only did it, I only did it because of this bonus cool thing, which I shall still, I'm still gonna demonstrate. Not a vault that you cannot enter. Dude, I'm just- oh, yeah, of course, you're just standing here. There you are, you shouldn't have dawdled behind like that. He's changed his accent. I've been looking for you everywhere, but I didn't go everywhere. I was right here, by your vault. This- this is all mine? It is. We'll be taking just enough silver and sickles as wizard booty to equip you for school. Can we go to the next vault now, sir? Aye, we should hurry. Harry, here's your money and the list of what you need. Buy everything on the list. I'll pick up the you-know-what, then meet you in front of Gringotts. And he gave you $850! Maybe I should have bought the boots then. What is the you-know-what? Can't tell you Hogwarts business. See you outside, Harry. Oh my gosh. Harry is sitting on so much cash. You are finally inside your family vault. It's hard to believe. You never knew about it before. I didn't even mention that Harry was living with, like, the Dursleys. It's just the game starts off and you're just like, uh, ha Harry, uh, Dumbledore sent you a letter to go to Hogwarts. You're going to Hogwarts, Harry. 
Oh, I've got to I've got to work my way out. That's okay. Uh, but yeah. I don't know, I, I like the presentation of Jetpack Joyride. Um, me playing the PSP version is also kind of interesting because it's a phone game that doesn't require you to tap anywhere specifically on the screen, and it's uh, one of those works definitely well no matter where you're playing it kinds of games, because it only uses one button. You can only go up and down by holding the button or not holding the button. Um, and in doing so, it's at least, it translates to the PSP just as well as you'd expect. I actually kind of like the, the wide aspect on the PSP as well. Definitely helps you see ahead, although I would always love to see a bit further because at some point you're going too fast and you just cannot tell what's in front of you. Um, pepper up potion? Ooh. Do they, do they even tell you what they do in this screen or no? Just... Pumpkin pasty. It recovers 25 stamina points. I mean, I had so many of them, so I was just like, oh, I mean, what are, what are you gonna do with them? So here's a snaky dungeon, and all you gotta do is just walk up. There's multiple routes to walking up. That's okay. It's the first dungeon, I'd be intimidated too. I wanna know who did the music on this one. some interesting dungeon music, I'll tell you that. Hold on, is that a door that just goes up, but like, this is like, the thinnest wall in the world? Yeah, it totally is. Nice. Nice. Um, so yeah, the, uh... The music in Jetpack Joyride is kind of only like a couple of pieces of music, although one thing I noticed, uh, near the end of me playing it, is that I changed, uh, one of the, the cosmetic things that you can wear to, um... Like, the, uh, I think it was like headphones, and suddenly there was a different piece of music playing. And that was the only time I ever had different music in-game. Um, which was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say it's a fair game. I'm not 100% sure if it's crazy worth playing nowadays, but it's definitely like a bit of a thing from the past for me. And also like just, um, it's got a curious retro achievement set because they basically mirror the in-game achievements. And one kind of annoying thing is that there's a cheat there's one achievement for effectively doing the whole run of quest to max level five times. That's gonna take you like ten hours, twelve hours, it just takes its time and it's just a fair bit of work. But it was great while I listened to podcasts and watched uh, this morning's F1 race, which was actually pretty good and would highly recommend if you are interested in motorsports, please watch that F1 race. Okay, Har Hagrid's in there. He wants me to spend my dollary dues on things. Okay, bro, I'm rich now. You know, I can't say that. Oh, okay. That's, that's okay. Have you found any hidden items yet? There are many all around. Why, I bet there's even one inside that barrel. Oh my goodness, is there one inside this barrel? You liar! Because I already took it. <laughs> look at this shop, look at these owls. Welcome to Eel... Eel... Eelops? Owl Emporium. What year, please? Yeah, what do you mean? Oh my gosh, you're really new to this, Harry. What year are you in Hogwarts first? Second? I'm not in Hogwarts yet. Sorry, we can't really sell to you. Look around if you like, though. Good day. Okay. Do you ever come back here? I don't think he come back here. Uh, this guy sells, um, potions. I feel like a potion kit bag sounds interesting, but I also don't know if, like, oh, cause yeah, now I've got a potion kit bag. What does that do? You can't use it now. Well, okay. Maybe it's just interesting to have. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hear a collector. I have a card that might interest you. Do you mean a famous witches and wizards card? Well, maybe. My collection is quite small at the moment. This one is very rare. Circuit herself on a train. What do you want for it? A bizarre stone. Interesting. I don't even know what that is. Mm. Must be a firsty. Sorry to bother you. What? Bro, okay, kids, never accept strange card trades from people in cloaks. They, they clearly just don't have good cards. It's just not worth it. Okay, see, I could get the collapsible one, but I'm loaded. Why would I buy dinky cauldrons? All potions are made in cauldrons. If you select and use your cauldron, you'll get a screen showing you all the ingredients you have. Select the ingredients you want and start to mix them. That's right. I think. Although maybe there's an encyclopedia that I have to unlock as well.
So we've got more shops down this way. I don't need another one, but probably the all the armor. It's probably the wise thing. Uh, you might also be wondering what is in here. This person sells uh, sweets. Chocolate frogs are interesting because every frog comes with a card. That's what I thought when it was like, I assume all these are just like healing items of some kind. But I assume if you're loaded, you can just buy some chocolate frogs and get some cards. I think that's the gist. And some cards are going to be rarer than other cards. Apparently there's a trading mechanic in the game where you can actually like, trade with other people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, I'm Draco Malfoy. Are you a Hogwarts student? I will be soon. Me too. I saw you earlier with that beastly servant Hagrid. I like Hagrid. Uh, do you? Not all sort, you know. He's almost as bad as a muggle. Perhaps worse. Well, see you later. Listen, you hate him, but you gotta love to hate him. Uh, so, okay, so I'm thinking we got a plain work robe and then there's a winter cloak on top of that. That sounds pretty good. We got gloves. Well, these are the gloves, I guess. 62, what a great number they picked. Pointed hat? Sure, chuck a hat on. Leather belt? Sure, chuck a belt on. And I don't know, name, pack of name tags? Like, what do I need a name tag for? Am I gonna get so caught out by not having a name? So I'll stick the gloves on, because that seems like a net win. Stick the hat on, because that seems like a net win. Stick the cloak on, because that seems like a net win. And stick the belt on, because that seems like a net win. In fact, that's actually interesting that the boots end up being the crappy thing. I don't think this uh, shop was particularly... It's a library. Hi there. Hi, young scholar. You're always welcome in flourishing blots. Hogwarts first year? Yes. We have your books right here already sorted. That'll be 143 sickles. That is right. That costs more than the wand. Education is completely a, you know, a class filter. Let me tell you that. Thank you for shopping at Flourish and Blots. Happy reading. Oh my goodness. So I think that's it. I don't know. I got school clothes. I got the books. Is that it? I think that's it. So. Oh, apparently I have to go to Diagon Alley in order to buy books. Is this Diagon Alley just right here? Am I in Diagon Alley? You know, everyone's rather nit like kind for Diagon Alley. Is this a different map, or are we just in it? Hi, Hagrid. Am I done? That's a fine start you made, Harry. Check the list I gave you and go buy the rest of the game. Oh, okay. Okay. I get. I get it, Hagrid. I get it. Okay. Three robes. Three robes. Three robes. That was the only thing I missed. I just didn't buy more robes. I'm the kind of person who doesn't need to wash. Listen, I am pristine. I don't grow mold. Why do I need to wash? That was me as a young kid. I'd always think that. Also, kids, don't think you do that. Uh, okay, so... I guess three robes. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There goes all my money, but... Man, that'd be kind of weird if you, uh... Or kind of annoying if you accidentally just buy the wrong thing. Like way a lot of wrong thing because it took me a while just to get like 150 just for the extra boots and to be honest I, I kind of had an extra 150 for boots anyways you gave up the supplies well done Addy that's one last thing happy happy birthday Arr. and it just give you an owl oh my gosh is that Hedwig right there she's beautiful what's her name she be Hedwig all the kids want owls they carry your mail and everything oh wow I've never had letters well, the time for us to be on your way. Now you're off to King's Cross Station, Harry. Find the platform nine and three quarters and look for the Hogwarts Express. Arr. You have completed buying all the items on the school list. Now you can leave for Hogwarts. Thanks, bro. Uh, <laughs> Harry jumps onto the train tracks like a maniac. I'm here to see my grandson off to Hogwarts. He looks like um, who's the guy? Uh, the 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 villain guy from Jumanji. Muggle clothes with the shoes, oh darling! <laughs> My goodness. Okay. I can't wait to get home and change out of these muggle clothes. They're so itchy, bro. Just... They never made a point of that in the movies that muggle clothes were bad clothes. Fine looking group of students this time. Um. <laughs> Hello there, Missy. This platform needs more benches. That is true. 
Hello, is this Hogwarts Express? Yes, it is. What's that on your forehead? Are you him? Oh my gosh. George and Fred, have you seen Percy? Yes, he's up front with the other prefects. Hey, Ron, do you know who this is? George, it isn't polite to stare. Who is he? Better get on, the train's about to leave. All aboard. Oh my gosh, I don't, I'm not trusting that train conductor, bro. Bro, that's the thinnest platform in the world. There was like no nine and three quartering as well. Don't want to show fire the train, we'll be leaving soon. And just on the train immediately. It's a vibe. We're vibing. We're on the train. Again, they've still put in the effort. The colors and the, the presentation is kind of there. Like, you know, what's the best way to convey that you're on a train, even if it's only got three carriages? You know. Where's the dining car? It's awfully stuffy in here. Oh, okay. Hello there. Don't jump. Should I wait back at the Muggles? I'm gonna be the first to see Hogwarts! These have the same sprite. Both of these people have the same sprite. That confused the heck out of me just then. How do we get into Earth Magic? I'll have to dig! I hope I don't get motion sickness. I'm just gonna casually go between- this is- I always get terrified by going between carriages. I've come a long way to go to Hogwarts! Check out the sweet trolling when it comes by. And by the way, Fred and I sell sweets at school too. Did you hear? There was a break in a Gringotts. I read it in the Daily Prophet. Who was it? No one knows. It must have taken powerful dark measure to get in and out like that. What's the Daily Prophet? The newspaper for wizards and witches. The only one. Still owned by the Murdoch media. <laughs> this is one I'm getting very topical today, apparently. Have you seen my tone? Nope. Oh, thank you. I wish you'd stop wandering off. What? Oh, okay. Unexpected private carriages. They're private in the film. It's certainly a windy day. It was a hot one today. It was like 39 in Sydney. I didn't really feel it inside, which was kind of amazing given my place, but... What are you looking at? You seats are comfy. Thank you, person who gave me all your trading cards. I've never been on a train before. I can't wait to join the Hogwarts Famous Witches and Wizards Card Collectors Club. <laughs> okay, sure. Gosh, so many people on this train. Are they going to show a film? On the train? Sorry, but I'm busy with my game. I'm curious whether the devs kind of remember this game takes place in 91. You could get away with it being a, on a Game Boy though, because it was around then, but... No one in my Harry Potter book had a Game Boy on them. Harry, Harry Potter would be ruined by like, the smartphones and like, GPS tracking everywhere. Hello, I'm Ron Weasley, are you really Harry Potter? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought it might be another one of my brother's jokes. Have you seen a toad? A boy named Neville lost his. No. No one here but us and my rad scabbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mighty great dreamer, you. Ron Weasley. Hey, buddy. Really? I've read all about you, too. Cast fellas said. Would you like to? Well, well, I mean, Harry doesn't do one in the film, so I might as well teach him. Teach how to do Verdemillions. No one in my family is magical, but I've learned all the course books by heart. I'm back to Toad to buy. Well, at least she gave you a new spell, and more than Harry. Didn't actually... Was it the first film or the second one where she does, um... Reparo. To, to fix his glasses. I feel like it was the first one. Because he had, like, it were broken in the center, so... Mother's not in class with her, she likes the sound of her own voice too much. Sure, okay. Sweet here, chocolate frogs, popcorn capacities, birdie pots, every flavor beans and more. Oh, she has chocolate frogs. What are chocolate frogs? They aren't real frogs, are they? Harry, you dumby. You dumby. Have you ever heard of Freddo? <laughs> I mentioned <laughs> I mentioned this in the last game, we're gonna keep mentioning it. All my homies love Freddo frogs. No, but they're tasty, plus they have famous witches and wizards cards in them. Great, another way to add to my collection. You collect them as well? There's a collector's club at Hogwarts and I've heard you can use them to do magic when you buy chocolate frogs off for one in the package. Hmm, maybe I should buy some magical famous witches and wizards cards or not. You can't go wrong with chocolate. What about those every flavor bean things? What flavors are there? Every flavor! Not just the good stuff. I think I had a dirt flavored one once. Uh, how do you know what dirt tastes like? Don't ask. You should get something though. Most taste pretty good. My brothers sell sweets at school, but they charge a lot more. Okay. Hi there, old lady. I'm just 
just gonna buy like 16 of these frogs. I don't know. This is like me and my like, you know, bad spending. I assume you get to eat. So what do the name tags do? You can't, I don't know what the name tags do. Oh boy, do I have to use each one, one at a time? Uh, for the looks of it, it looks like I just opened up every single one of them. Maybe. Hold on, if I got a... Florida Magi... There you go, okay, I've picked up a lot more cards. I'm pretty sure you get to see them, as well. They put in the effort, they modeled a lot of people. Bass player with the popular wizarding band, The Weird Sisters. Alright, well, I'm the drummer, so this guy is me. I'm an Orsino Thurston. Ooh, I got a cello. Oh, we got a lead guitar, we got a rhythm guitar, we got a bagpipes. This is a lot of people in this band. What is this, Electric Light Orchestra? Oh my gosh, hi there. I broke it. <laughs> I broke it, oh no. This is Crab and Ned's Goyle. Grunt, snoot. <laughs> I, I, I know exactly what's going on, I was not expecting to break this. I see you bet Weasley careful, Potter, if you don't want to mix with the wrong people. I know who the wrong people are. You should be more polite, Potter, or you end up like Mr. Weasley here. You better go. We don't feel like leaving until we have some of your sweets. Help yourselves, boys. Squeak! So did I break it? I think I did break it. Wow, that's an amazing one. The, okay, the other thing I heard of the game was that I'm pressing all the buttons. It, it, ain't, it ain't doing anything. I think it's, it's hard balked. I mean, good thing I saved before I got on the train, at least, but... Okay, note to, note to self. Okay, we're rebooting this. That's an interesting one. That was an interesting uh, way to break it. So, pro tip, don't open up your, your cards before you get there. That is a rather curious... A rather curious place to balk it up. Okay, uh, I'm gonna skip through a bunch of stuff. There you go, Hagrid, I got the, I got the stuff. Thanks. What's the name? Uh, owl. Okay, sure. And I just walk a bunch until I've crossed the train tracks, gone onto a platform. A bunch of these people are gonna then talk to me and say, uh, hi, yes, hi, yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, game number three, uh, was uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. I spoke about it on stream like three weeks ago because that's when they announced it and uh, I have now bought it physically because I am a sucker for games that I enjoy and especially I really wanted to see it and I really wanted to just play Metroid Prime yet again even if it's been less than a month and uh, in doing so I can easily say this is almost exactly the game I just played. It does not really do too much different uh, but the big noticeable things are that you are immediately defaulted into um, the twin stick control. They really wanted to show off that twin stick control a fair bit. Um, so the twin stick control, uh, the only real, well the big differences are is that now you use the, the left stick purely straight and the right stick will do looking in all the directions. Um, you're still locking on with, uh, I guess it's ZL now on the switch controller, but because you've kind of dedicated your right thumb to the right stick, uh, the game kind of gives you shoulder options to do the immediate commands. So suddenly L becomes jump, uh, ZR becomes shooting, and uh, R becomes uh, missiles. Um, but kind of interestingly, uh, you might think, hmm, don't I need to be locking on with ZL, uh, jumping into the side with L, uh, charging a beam with ZR and shooting a missile with R? Yeah, that's why it feels kind of painful after a while um, and I just feel like eh, when you're locking on what do you need to aim at what's with the right stick so fortunately the face buttons uh, a still shoots B still jumps um, X does the morph ball the one the button to the left actually actually it might be Y sorry if I does the morph ball and then X interestingly if you hold X the D-pad does the, the visors like usual, but holding X does the beams, because you don't have a way to uh, view, well, to, you know, to switch beams automatically. That is a bit clunky for me. I don't like 
having to switch means by holding down a button and then pressing the D-pad, it feels kind of cumbersome. So I wonder what I did. Because I saw these guys just walk on screen and that kind of like threw me off. I was like, oh my gosh. They tell me you're Harry Potter. I am. How disappointing. This is crab and that's goil. <laughs> Let's see you that Weasley. Careful, Potter. You don't want to mix with the wrong people. I know who the wrong people are. You should be more polite, Potter, or you'll end up like Weasley here. You better go. We don't feel like leaving until we have some of your sweets. Help yourselves, boys. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I assume that's what the game wanted to do, was basically push me into a thing. So we got Vermilius Verdimilius, which is a different spell, but... I assume just uh, deal the damage and you should be good. Although, uh, I feel like this game is also filled with uh, bosses that are... I'm curious how much magic, or how much damage this one does. I feel like this game's gonna be filled with bosses that just... Whoop your health. I guess you could heal in the middle of the fight if you got your, your healing items. But I mean, I was taking like 15 damage and... I guess I can only really heal 25 at a time. That being said, I stole his money. And gained a level. Next time, get your own sweets. You're better than you look, Potter. To show there are no hard feelings, here's a card combination for your folio triplicates. Use it if you face great danger. Wow, how very nice of him. You have to fear that nasty snob Draco with spells. Serves him right for talking about your new friends that way. I have one new friend. We were just saying Hermione sounds like she talks, you know, too much. We are not friends with her yet. Um, anyway. Give that commit a save. Nice one, Eric. Okay. Do I just chase him down the other end of the train? I guess. Uh, so, I'm not the biggest fan of the... Uh, of the, the stick control. I still feel like the original controls works better. I did try to play the whole game with it. I felt when I was locking on in combat, I just took my thumb off the right stick and just started using, you know, the face buttons. Um, and on top of that, I kind of feel like, you know, perhaps there's... Oh, please pull on your Hogwarts robes before disembarking. Oh. Here we are, Hogwarts. We're all in black clothes. Everyone by me, then. <laughs> I tried his accent. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna try and... I believe what you gotta do is... Pause the game... Once we get into the next bit. We'll be taking boats across the lake to Hogwarts, Arr. Now keep your hands and feet inside the boat, and don't be dragging your wands in the water. Oh, and mind the giant squid and other huge monsters. Huge monsters? Wish I knew a few spells. Off to the boats, then. Okay, thanks, Hagrid. Thanks, Hagrid. So here's the thing, I'm pretty sure this is a thing, at least one thing I read. If you hit start, and then you back out, you get to, like, actually start shooting? I guess I ran into the coast, so now I have to fight, like, flies. But, uh... Apparently that that is, like, an actual small minigame where you get to control the boat and shoot in front of you. And it's only if you have at least 30 boots in your inventory. That was the whole point of me grinding that much. Was just so I could show off that you can shoot shoot purple things in front of you and call it a day. But it's an interesting secret and I always find these devs have like really bizarre secrets in their games. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm further back than I was before. This feels a little unfinished, given where the sprites are appearing, but... And especially where I just got hit, but sure, okay. I got attacked by a tentacle, and instead it's just like... Uh, it's just like a dragonfly. He's just here, he's just chilling. Wow. I can't go up and down, so I'm just gonna hope that me staring left and right is good enough. Not really, can I, can I, I haven't even like demonstrated that I can hit anything as well. <laughs> oh, and the dragonfly got to me. 
So I believe there is a red- and now this is the tentacle. There is a retro achievement for apparently getting through this whole section without, like, touching anyone. Which is, uh, kinda nutty. Kinda interesting. And nutty. This guy is not a big fan of my spells. Maybe he's a Verdemilius guy. He is a Verdemilius guy. That's the thing, you just gotta figure out what's the spell for the guy. And the tentacle ran away. He hated Verdemilius. What? Oh, it does take out someone. <laughs> That's the dock. I'm not going to the dock, bro. Oh, apparently too far right is, uh, Bad News Bears. What is that? Is that- is that a magic pistachio? It's a- <laughs> it's being attacked by the magic pistachio right here. Magic pistachio is afraid of me. Ooh, I got Nintendo! I just realized I'm shooting owls! Oh! Ah, I was like, do I have two pages? I do have two pages. That's a... It's a little bit hard for me to follow. Also, I just... No, this spell always co co costs two. I don't know why I thought it cost three for a moment. Uh, but yeah, I didn't try the gyro controls, uh, primarily to go through the game, but I did kind of flick, uh, I played mostly with the, 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 the twin stick look aim, the new mode. Um, it definitely feels like it kind of works though, and I, I like the various control options you have, whether it's like, oh, you can swap some of these buttons, you can make it so that the gyro substitutes your aiming in various places. Uh, you even have the ability to lock onto enemies and then look around, or like aim around with the, um, with either motion controls just like the Wii version, or, uh, just like, I'm just gonna run, run into the, the dock. Um, or you can, uh, actually use the right stick, so you can even do what was with motion controls without the motion controls. Um, well that was invigorating, good work Harry. I was just, uh, thanks. Now for a brisk walk through the dungeon and up to Hogwarts, are You there, you got your toad. Yes, Trevor's right here, thank you. Good, now stay close and don't wander off. There's some creep and crawly nasties off the main path. Never mind that there might be treasure in the side corridors. Off we go then. Okay, thanks Hagrid. Um, one other thing I thought was kind of weird and I instinctively started picking this. And, and I, I was like, I, oh my gosh, Harry. You, you, have, you have lost the crowd yet again. But I instinctively spotted this. Like, I just started playing the game and I'm going, Oh my gosh. Um, on the hybrid controls, the scan visor is right on the D-pad. On the classic controls, the scan visor is left. It took me a whole hour for me to stop instinctively hitting left to use the scan visor. I just... It, it was so ingrained in my psyche that left was scan visor, that pressing right was just sacrilege to me. And it took me so long to just, like, unlearn that. And I can't explain why, because the beams are all in the same order. They're all in the same positions. But it's just the scan visor swapped with the x-ray visor, and only in that control scheme. If you switch it to the original control scheme, it's normal. And you can do that in gameplay. It's really weird. It's like, why, why is it different? There you are. Try and keep up. This isn't a safe place off by yourself, Harry. Thanks, Hagrid. Why do you not have a front door to Hoggy Warts? Oh my gosh, this dungeon keeps going, bro. Oh my gosh, it's a big rat. And he's yellow as well. Harry's just taking it, apparently. Hopefully big rat hates the spell. Maybe he hates it. I don't know. <laughs> Fifteen, jeez. This is what I mean, like, I don't know how exactly you can, like, withstand all the hits. You kind of going to need to, like, keep just, like, topping off with, a uh, pumpkin spice lattes between the battles. Even now, it's like, both of these guys are dealing more than, like... Well, I guess he dealt, dealt zero, but it's like, they're dealing 17. If both of them hit, I don't have anything I can put... Oh, I guess I got a Wigan Weld. Yeah. It's like, that, does, that only buys me, like, a couple of turns. So in that case, maybe I gotta use Nintendo. Mmm. 
That's not a fun amount of damage. Uh, I'm just gonna burn this and hopefully it deals damage. Well, that, that got him. I like how just in one fell swoop suddenly it's like, here's a bunch of enemies that like, kick your butt. So harsh, jeez. What is a pepper up potion? We might as well find out. Is it like 50? Oh, it's magic points. Okay. And anything else of these that I don't know how they work? I guess I could use the chocolate. Does the chocolate increase my health? No, it doesn't. It's just there for funsies. There's Hedwig. You can't use Hedwig. Okay. Um, so in that case, I guess, yeah. What's Cauldron Cakes? 50? 20. Cauldron Cakes is less. Weird, but sure. Well, if I avoid the encounters, am I just gonna get caught out on a boss? Um, so yeah. Uh, only other big differences, uh, the, the biggest one is, um, the way the charge beam works. For some odd reason, instead of just shooting once and then charging, you shoot two or three times before you charge. It kind of feels like there's a weird delay. I kind of get it because it prevents you from spamming the button and maybe breaking the, the Switch Joy-Cons a bit more. Uh, but I also feel like it's weird that that's even a change. Like, I don't know. You've got two attack buttons on that hybrid controls. You don't need to spam one button a lot or even the shoulder button a lot. I feel like it's a bit needless. Um, other than that, it plays exactly the same and possibly because it's just using the original source code. I don't see this as being a HD recreation, really. It's just kind of take the original game, re-render it on, um, with newer graphics, and then uh, call it a day, basically. Package it up. It's using most of the same sounds. There's a couple of different um, kind of environmental sound uh, mixing, I felt. Like, there were some times I felt the footsteps of Samus was a lot more pronounced. Which I actually did prefer. I feel like there's also a lot of lovely visual... And I fell over. What does this mean for Harry? You are completely healed and go to the beginning of the dungeon. I don't think you even lose m money. I think this game just wants you to keep having a crack at it. If you die, it's on you. And you die in real life. Uh, yeah, definitely the graphics overhaul is quite nice. Um, uh, one last thing I guess that is different is that, uh, basically for every item you unlock in the game, you're going to unlock, uh, concept art rather than in four big batches when you get 50%, 100% of the scans, 100% uh, of the items, and then beat the game in hard mode. There's still a little bit of items, uh, a little bit of stuff you have to unlock by beating the game in hard mode, which you can only do after beating the game in normal. I think it's got the easy difficulty from uh, Prime Trilogy as well in there, so... Um, but yeah, for as a package, it is a objectively, like... I mean, it's so mildly better, but I can't really think of, like, any... I think I can think of, like, one thing that's worse, maybe, but it runs fine, it runs just as well as it originally did. Uh, it uh, looks still great, it plays great, because it is such a great game. It doesn't really need changing, other than if you're kind of upset about where the space jump boots are positioned and the, like, you need to get the boost ball, then you get the space jump boots and then you go all the way back to the Fendrana Drifts. Same thing with the X-Ray Visor. I don't think the X-Ray Visor is actually that bad. I think that one's not as bad as people say. Uh... Double Wigan Weld, ooh. I think I need to use Wigan Weld. Wigan Weld! Oh, let's save the game here as well, just so I've got to save. I don't trust the game after it broke like that. Crash is like, that's not even, that wasn't even a crash, that was just like... The Pokemon, like, negative zone, basically. Classic Game Boy Color games and just like, having quirkiness like that. How amazing that every single, like, dead end has a card combination. There's probably a lot in that Gringotts bank that I just, like, never clicked on. 
Oh, he was just here the whole time. This is an affair of you to scon saunter off and make our Hagrid fret Harry. Ha Hagrid, just just don't walk off. Oh my gosh, it, 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 we got purple walls. Oh, and there's a boss, even better. All right, how tough do you think he is? I think it'll be a pushover. Oh, he's a knight. He is a knight. Well, I have Flipendo Duo, so let's give it a go, because he's not a rat. No, 22 is not too shabby. He doesn't seem to be hitting me, so... We'll just, we'll just keep doing that. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a better package. I would definitely say if you loved the original, give it a go. If you haven't played the original, give it a go, because it's like a good game. That's all I can say. You might say, oh, 60 Australian or 40 US is maybe a bit too much for a game of that age. That's up to you, sure. Uh, but I personally think this game is worth just whatever, because it's a great game. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend playing great games at whatever price. Well, maybe not crazy prices, but it's less than a regular game. I take it. Uh, oh, and also for some reason, when the credits happen, they just kind of say, "And thanks to everyone who worked on the original game," and they don't credit them by name. It's a bit weird, but sure. Up the stairs, and we'll be in proper Hogwarts. Everyone else made it. Already made it inside. Oh, th oh thanks, Hagrid. Thanks, Hagrid. Oh, I knew that. I knew they put like something in there. They're gonna do it twice. Are they gonna do it twice? Oh, I just put a potion in there. Oh my goodness! It's a big hole, and we had to enter via the the dungeon. The first year students, Professor McGonagall. Oh, okay, see ya. He's still going. We'll get to Hogwarts the sorting ceremony begin soon, where well, you'll be assigned to one of our houses, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin. Your house will be where you sleep and study, and all the house points you earn may win the Harris Cup. Psst, what are house points? You earn them by doing well or lose them by breaking the rules. They're added up at the end of the year, and the house with the most points wins the cup. How are we sorted? I think we have to wrestle a troll. Follow me, please. Oh my goodness. No one tells anyone anything. Just stuff happens. Like, this is like Harry's first day of actual school. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know anything. He's never talked to human beings before in his life. You've managed to cross the lake and find your way through the dungeon, and now you're finally here, in Hogwarts. It's got warts in the name, it's just a weird... Oh my gosh, that is... that is the emblem. In all of its beautiful glory. Kinda interestingly, I, I, I always find it's w weird that Every single one of these games puts the Great Hall in the same place, in the castle. I'm not too sure if that's described in any Hogwarts or any Harry Potter media before the films, and I just decided that every game stuck to that. I hope they put us in the same house and not Slytherin. They aren't all bad, but some are nasty characters. Some nasty characters live there. Ah yes, hashtag not all Slytherin. Oh boy. Do I even get into the drama after saying that? Maybe. Listen, if I got some downtime, I'll say it, but uh, I'd prefer to not, like, keep interrupting myself on it. Greetings, first year students, I'm Albus Dumbledore, Headmaster of Hogwarts. <laughs> Please find your table as soon as you're <laughs> sorted into your house. Thanks, Dumbledore, appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Thanks, hat. Singing hat. You can cap them all? Does he sing in the book? I think he sings in the book. Green to the Hermione! And there she is. Oh my gosh, it ate her head. Gryffindor! Oh sorry, Gryffindor! He's, he's got a weird name. Weird accent. It's just a talking hat, bro. Not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Well, if you're sure, it better be Gryffindor! Oh my gosh. Who, who would have thought you could just convince... Oh, I'm just leaning to you. Is this the Gryffindor table? This is Slytherin! Slytherin above all! That's him, that's the Harry Potter! Too bad that isn't a muggle table for you, Potter. I clearly hit him with spells. And now I have been cursed, because I touched a ghost. You want to go find your own chap? No, oh, this is your table. Well, that's clearly their table, so... Is this the Gryffindor table? Oh, this is Ravenclaw. Not that beats Ravenclaw! Is the house 
<laughs> as messy as this table. Oh my gosh. So sad. There's probably so many lines of dialogue here. I'm gonna talk to this ghost. Sir Nicholas de Mimsy, Porpington resident ghost on Gryffindor Tower. How may I be of service? Is this the Gryffindor table? It, 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 it is. I'm having a strong. Hey, over here! Thanks, I was feeling a bit lost. Oh my gosh, you're all the way over there. And I am not controlling this. The ground looks bizarre. Is that correct? That kind of looks a little wrong. I think I get it, but it does look a bit weird. Who is that sharp faced man up there? He looks like he hates me. That's Snape, the potions teacher and master of Slytherin. Watch out for him. The one in the turban is Quirrell. He teaches defense against dark arts. They say Snape wants his job. I'm bit sorry, the Gryffindor! Well done, Ron. You'll be with all of us. Oh, uh. <laughs> okay, see ya. Literally everyone in Ron's family is in Gryffindor. I don't know why he's like crazy surprised. The sorting is complete. Welcome to New Year at Hogwarts. Let the banquets begin. I hope you all enjoyed the uncommon the welcoming banquet. <laughs> Off to find your houses now. He doesn't find in his letters, but. Oh my gosh! You can feel a feather in your cap to, uh, to have been sorted into Gryffindor. You hear a rumor that a new card combination is available in the Wizard Card Collectors Club. Look at that thing flying around. And everyone's disappeared. Everyone's gone to the rapture, apparently. So I assume we're up the stairs. Oh my gosh, this guy again. Oh, icky first years, everywhere you look. Oh my gosh. Behave, please, or should I call you the bloody baron? Just trying to have fun. Whoop. What was that? Oh, he laughed as well. Peeves the poltergeist. Be careful of him. The bloody baron, the Slytherin house ghost, is the only one who can control him. Is, is that how that works? Oh my gosh, you got to take the long way around these stairs. I had Look around for cubby holes around the school. Students have been hiding things in them as long as Hogwarts has been here. Is this a cubby hole? This is just a cowboy statue. Where's Gryffindor? It could be anywhere. Oh my gosh. Be careful. Unused classrooms and offices can sometimes hide creepy things. Alright, so we're just going to go into every room. Now, I th think I might have some recollection. This is just like the AGNC. That's just England. Who is fighting me in this classroom? Snakes! I hate snakes. I don't actually hate snakes. Oh, but when they sp- uh, 40! Why can you wander into this room? Why can you actually- Why can you actually wander into this room? That's such a beginner's trap. That is such a beginner's trap, excuse me. Hello, Harry, nice of you to stop by- Oh, big thanks, bro. Oh, I've, I've stolen some witch's cards. But, like, what? <laughs> like, I, I get it, I get it, RPGs do that, but it's just like, that just- That just feels amazingly, like, vicious. And now I've got to figure out where I am now. Is this a mirror? Professor McGonagall, you gotta help me. Where is Gryffindor? Look up, not down! Oh, thanks, McGonagall. Appreciate it. Four word answer. <laughs> we all appreciate it. This is another, like, yeah, this is another classroom that's just here. Someone's gonna tell me that, like, oh, the, the Prisoner of Azkaban GBA game's the same deal. I heard there's a shortcut to the sixth floor on the eastern side of this hallway. Okay. Ooh. He's, he's got sunglasses. This is how you know he's cool. It's not really that hidden. It kind of has a door frame, but it's like, okay, now I'm on the sixth floor, which is the, uh, history floor, apparently. Hi there. Where's Gryffindor? I thought it was near a big ball. Oh my goodness, they do not make this easy, do they? Stole some money on the shelves. Gosh, there's just enemies everywhere. I, I, I'm just surprised there's enemies in all these rooms. Actually, one mechanic I liked about the third game on the GBA is that you get to, um, 
basically scan enemies, and then they appear on the overworld instead of these, like, glowy things. I wonder if, like, that mechanic is just not here in this game. Oh, is this the Gryffindor room? This is the Candy Emporium. They don't charge more for the... 150, wow. They don't charge as much for the chocolate frogs, though. That is a lot of chocolate frogs, bro. So, I guess I just... I don't seem to be getting, like, too many different frogs. I seem to have, like... It's like... It looks like close to 100, and I have nine of the same guy. I have nine of the same card. Are you kidding me? Maybe I'll complete them one day, but... Here's your new card combination. Oh, thanks, bro. So is this actually... No, this can't be the... This can't be the... Hogwarts room. Sorry, the, the Gryffindor room. Oh my gosh, what is this art? I tell ya. There's a magic door in this hallway that will take you close to Flitwick's class. Is this the magic door? This is just art class, and I HATE art class! Fun captures though. Oh, the muggle classes are on this floor, including art and music. Oh, it is actually art and music, the floor. Where's Gryffindor? Look for a fat lady in a pink dress, that's all I know. Cupboards. Oh my gosh, it's a flute. Ugh. Gosh, yeah. Like, just suddenly it's like, hey, you can go places. I heard there's a shortcut to the sixth floor and it eats it. Oh, wait, okay, so I'm on the third floor, but you're saying look up? And that's the medicine ward. The medical ward, rather. Uh, I'm going down, and hi there. Hi there. He is so short, he is... Hi, where is Gryffindor? I'm not sure. Higher up than this, though. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Gosh, so many classrooms. I guess this is how, you know, maybe, maybe this game is actually genius. There was a staircase in the... In the, uh... In the ass of that statue. It was actually... Is, there's a statue... There's, it goes back. It goes back the other way. What the heck? Alright, pinkhead person. Be careful if you go into unused classrooms. You could meet something nasty. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Is this an unused classroom? I am actually in the dungeon now. Snade's classroom and office are down here. He's the scariest teacher here. It's a door. Oh, it's not a door anymore. And now it's a door, which I can't go into anyways. But sure. Cool. We've got a... Uh, Aerodactyl. A uh, picture of a knight. Hi right there. You need a quick lift to the fifth floor. There's a magic door in this hallway. I'll take you there. Is this the magic door? Just people with test tubes. Uh, okay. Evil classroom. Some of these don't feel like the unused classrooms. Like, that, that pot was brewing. I am now back here. This is just broom... The broom closet is evil. The broom closet is evil. Nothing is sacred in Hogwarts. I'm out of this school. I'm leaving. I'm going. Those statues are moving. And I'm locked in. Hi there, moving statue. How you doing? Okay, cool. Thanks, moving statue. Moving statue's gotta mean something's good, right? Maybe the devs spend all their time modeling Hogwarts. Okay, so we've clearly got like. Don't walk into classes that are in session. Good thing no one was in any of the classes. Okay, this is a different 
Griffin, which has cauldron cakes. Just shoot from the right by his door. I did discover that, I will tell you that. <clears throat> Why is there water coming out of this room? That is an out of order room. One of those Griffin statues is supposed to lead to another hallway or something. Oh, is this the one? This is the one I saw that leads up. Okay. Alright, so I assume I just kind of go around and that's kind of it. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> Too much Hagrid impression. Alright, you're dead. You can give me some good examples. Good, good directions. Not far away. Okay, well this floor sounds good. <laughs> they did mention the fat lady, which is probably a, a good hint as well. But there's no fat lady on this floor? I want to say is actually on the seventh floor, and whatever floor is the seventh floor is a very good guess, but I'm just going to assume if I keep going up, because everyone keeps telling me it's up. So did I go to this floor? That is a calculator. <laughs> Someone did mention the giant orb though, which is probably a good sign. Okay, so it's not it, but a portrait on the north wall, I hear it muttering sometimes. Do not disturb orb gazing. I, w I, w I would gaze into the orb, to be honest. Another, yep, another dingy classroom. You think the developers of the Earths would know how to not get you lost? And I am going. Can I just go back up? It's kind of weird that you can just go back up. Makes sense, though. Hi there. Might be behind a picture. Well, yeah, I kind of guessed that. This probably makes a bit more sense. Can you talk? Why wouldn't I be able to talk? Do you know where Gryffindor is? Indeed I do, I'm the guardian of the Gryffindor. How do I get in? they are giving me the secret password. Where is the secret password? It wouldn't be much of a secret if I told you. Silly, you gotta find it yourself. Oh my gosh. Can I ask this guy for the secret password? Somebody said to find the Gryffindor house ghost. Uh, he would have been the guy a few floors down, right? The house ghost know the password. Why do you... Why... Why do they even do passwords? Like, just, like, give, give me a key card. Give me a key. Passwords are insecure anyways. There's plenty of examples in, like, the books of just people going into the other, like, rooms. Hi there, ghost. I'd be a poor official house ghost if I didn't. What is it? First, perhaps, could you do me a favor? Oh my gosh. These hallways can get a bit breezy. One's head can flop about when one least expects it. Perhaps you could find something to keep it more secure. Like what? An old school tie would do nicely. What would I find one? I think I saw one in the entrance hall. Oh my goodness. I could take the long way down. I might as well just gauge how many floors I'm dealing with here. Or not, actually. But I'm going down, so that's a good sign. This looks like it's super far down, because if I find stairs leading out of here... Oh my goodness, jeez. Like... This is just an amazing, like... Myriad of rooms. I'm just trying to understand, like, where all of this goes. Alright, entrance hall, got it. Someone's got a tie. Do you have a tie? Gargoyles by the teacher's common room guard the door all day, but they sleep at night. I guess. Hi, test tubes. Oh, wait, these are the house points. Okay. There's only two... St oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Oh, I gotta fight people in here as well? Okay, sure. Um... I guess I can wander back into the back into the dungeons, I guess. Now that ghost gave a very good clue, which was the entrance hall, but unfortunately. There's not much to go off when he says the entrance hall, and there's two people in the entrance hall. You darn ghosts, I tell ya. This is 
just like hiding in a drawer? Like, do they just want me to like navigate one of these old rooms and just like find it? Or am I just gonna get killed by you know, rats yet again? That is a big chair. And that is a bed. Who sleeps in this bed? It's just like a counselor's office because they've got a couch as well. Alright, broom closet better have one. There wasn't any other rooms on the right, it was just the... Um... That ghost gave me misleading information. Darn ghosts, never trust them. Never put your stake in a ghost, apparently. Or do put a stake in a ghost. Hi, do you know you know where I could get a password? Are you just gonna teach me about cubby holes? Appreciate it. Ask Nick on the 6th floor. Nick was not good help. You're gonna refer to Nick all the time, aren't you? That was a lot of money in that thing. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> Sudden progression of the game comes to a uh, fairly, fairly large stop. Hmm. Yep, what a, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful segment of the game. I wonder if they did it to pad time. I don't know. But it definitely feels bizarre how, like, I'm not saying I expect, like, a game to be, like, high action all the time, and I guess, like, someone's gonna be like, oh, I love this game, how dare you criticize it. I guess there's always gonna be that, but... I'm kind of sitting there going, okay, I've now just suddenly had to understand the whole layout of this, like, whole building, which consists of seven floors, at least, if it's just like the other games. There's people on different floors, there's stairs that I just sometimes can see, sometimes I can't. I'm wandering around, just trying to find the stairs, stuff like that. Here's Nick again. Couldn't find one. Did you look in the entrance hall? I think a gargoyle. A gargoyle. Gargoyle was. Oh my gosh. Okay, is there, is there a Sphinx butt? Okay. Like, ah, oh. I got this whole, like, secret passage thing, but it's like... I gotta remember where all these secret passages even are. I remember off the top of my head, the, uh, the, the third game, it had a portrait room. And all the, the secret passageways led to the portrait room. So you could just easily go into the portrait room from a secret passage and then you could basically just like funnel out to any other passage you want to. Whereas here it's like I just had to know that that door leads me down like three floors? Only three of them though, not, not all the ones I need. Or maybe four. They don't label what floor you're on. Was this the bottom floor? Nope. Ah, uh, it's, it's not clicking with me all of a sudden. I'm just... Oh! It's a bizarre feeling. It is a bizarre, like... Just kind of like... I'm gonna say emptiness. That sounds very, very vapid and... and, uh, meaningless. But you know what I mean? It's like... I was the king. I was fighting all these... all these monsters. And here am I... running around... Because no one told me the password of the house I was in. No one even told me where. So one's got a tie. Really? Really? He had the tie. Okay, so now I gotta go all the way back up. Talk to Nearly Adless Nick. And then I gotta go, go up one more floor. Tell the person the password. All for what? All for what? Who knows? So, do I get into the drama? Uh... I feel... I'm so torn on the drama, I will say this. I might not talk about it now, because I think we're in the heat of this. But I would definitely say that this drama and... Oh my gosh. Oh, and you can't even go back up on that one. What? 
Does this go up? Okay, phew, phew. Uh, the big thing with, uh, I guess, most dramas is that, uh, the, you know, what was it, like, never, never wrestle with a pig, you'll both get dirty and the pig likes it, or something like that. There's a degree of that. There's a certain degree of, there are some people who participate in internet dramas who kind of just enjoy it, or they stoke it. And I feel like it's very, you gotta be very careful to just, like, notice any of this. And that's why I feel like the general rule of thumb is, no matter how you feel, step back, take a deep breath, is everything alright? Because a lot of people jump the gun on reacting to stuff. And I feel like perhaps, you know, my frustrations with a certain drama going on that involves a uh, certain video game related to a certain video game I'm playing right now uh, has continued to spiral out of control. But uh, I will talk to Millie Adler's Nick for the moment. Is this the kind of tie you want? Smashing! This will keep the old melon upright. The password is Kaput Draconis. That just means, uh... What is that, dragon head? Could put his head. That's a fun one, so... Uh... So... Okay, without without any mention to any of the actual beliefs of any of the parties involved, uh, there were... I think the very, very, very beginning I can say is that some people, and I don't know who, but I feel like this is my running theory, some people were upset that people playing Hogwarts Legacy would detract from their streaming viewership. They viewed Hogwarts Legacy as a hit to that. Now, I want to just sit on that because that's just the theory. I really don't know, but it starts to explain everything else afterwards. So, hello again. Kaput Draconis. Oh my gosh, you don't have to yell it. In you go. Perhaps I won't have to explain any of the rest of the drama. Welcome to Gryffindor, Harry. Have a look now. I'm glad I'm finally here. You found Gryffindor finally, where your house in Hogwarts, where you live and study to make everyone feel at home. New car combination is now available in the Wizard Car Collectors Club. Which I still don't know where that is, by the way. Because I, I just want to note that... Oh, I guess I'm unlocking these, but... Who knows? Who knows what I'm doing? I should probably say it so I don't have to walk around anymore as well. Make sure you look at the announcement board. Oh boy, I love chess. Oh boy, that is hurting my eyes as that's flashing past. Jeez. I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm going to learn so much and do so well. Where are you going? The girls' dorm is through there. Boys are never allowed. Jeez, I could, I could be topical and say women should gate... Uh, <laughs> it's the girls' dorm. You can get into trouble if you leave Gryffindor at night, but only if you get caught. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Everyone's a redhead. I hope we win the House Cup this year. Slytherin has won it six years in a row. Okay, sure. Oh, okay. you're following me. That's the boys' dorm. First year students sleep on the first level. The film made it look like there's only like 10 kids a year at Hogwarts. We better turn in soon, Harry. Tomorrow will be a big day. This is a, this is a massive room when you think about it. Like, okay. I'm too tired to talk. Good night, Harry. It's an honor to share the house with you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Does Harry get the room at the end? He does get the bed at the end. Uh, Neville just said hi. You only know that time's passing when you put an hourglass next to bed. That's my alarm clock. I just hear the last bit of sand and go, Whoa. Morning. Hurry, Harry. We have to get the potions class. Snape doesn't like it when you're late. Are you going to tell me where it is? No. Okay. You guessed it, more wandering around the castle, I guess. I'm gonna assume this class is in the basement though, so I might know it sooner. Ooh, can I read the newspaper? Nope. Can I read the chessboard? Heck yeah, I knew reading the chessboard would pay off. And apparently that shelf as well. There are so many of these cards around, like, jeez. Uh, so... Yeah. The running theory is some people in some kind of private conversation, so perhaps we may never know, uh, believed that Hogwarts Legacy is going to detract from their viewership. Uh, I'm guessing. There's no, there's no evidence and there's also no evidence who, but it explains what I feel. So in doing so, a narrative was crafted. Now, this is my tinfoil conspiracy, because I got no proof for that, but I can definitely say when the narrative was crafted, a lot of people picked it up. That the game 
uh, would fund J.K. Rowling, which it does, um, in some way. I don't know if it, if it funds her on sales or if it funds her just by commission, but people do not like her, and if you don't like her, sure. But, uh, they're saying it's wrong because of some things she has said. Now, whether that affects you should be up to you as a person. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna refrain from referring to any of these groups by name because I don't think it matters. I actually don't think it actually matters the names I put in here because I really want to comment on the actions going on. Because that, that really helps me, like, piece dramas. It's just like, what has actually happened? The Who only really, like, helps me... Okay, yeah, apparently his elbow had a card. The Who only really helps, like, pointing fingers. And as much as, like, people love pointing fingers and go on, this group sucks, I think this is definitely a... What is going on here? Is this a... There was actually a hole in the wall. I think that it is not healthy to point the original blame at groups, but I can definitely point to various people not like, shouting down the bad actors and the bad attention. You, why are you not in class? I'm trying to find my way. It's in the dungeons, even a first year should know that. Ah, yes. Granted, I should have known because I was wandering everywhere. Okay, so just one of these classrooms is going to be potions. I would have guessed... Oh, actually, this makes sense. I want to learn how to make a healing potion because the Slytherins keep tripping me in the hole. Wow. Now that, that is some sad story. My brother told me if I shake a bottle... A, f a full potion bottle, something fun will happen. Ooh. I'm not gonna watch. It smells like rotten eggs in here. Okay. Careful you don't fall into a cauldron potter. Hi there, Ronaldo. My brothers say Snape is as mean as he looks. Okay. Try not to make it too big a mess, potter. Hi there, Snape. Well, Harry Potter, our new celebrity. Please find a seat. <laughs> oh. Potter, where would you look if I asked you to find a Bizarre Stone? I know, I know! I don't know, so perhaps you should ask Hermione. I think she does. And that's one house point from Gryffindor, Potter. Good job, Harry. Good job. Oh! <laughs> that was hydrochloric acid! Your friend, Mr. Longbottom, seems to have hurt himself. I'll let you gather the potion ingredients to heal up. First aid, my face is burning! You need to find two portions of Beetle's Eyes, one portion of Snake Fangs, and one portion of Boom Slang Skin. What is a Boom Slang? Search for them in or around Hogwarts. You might want to talk to Hagrid, the gamekeeper, about where to look. And be quick, I will deduct house points for slowness. Hurry, <laughs> hurry, my face burns! <laughs> Poor Neville. Okay, Hermione, you know everything. Don't you dare get me into trouble. Okay, uh, Snape, Snape, where do I go? Inadequate one point deduction, it seems celebrity isn't everything. Keep looking. What the heck, Snape? This is. Oh, you, you got better. It really hurts! <laughs> Malfoy, you gotta help me. I'm trying not to make a big mess, Potter. Okay, Ron, you gotta help me. Ron, Ron, you gotta help. Wish I could go along. I have to say. But does anyone know? Does anyone actually know? No potion can cure what you are, but oh my gosh. <laughs> that person is wholesome, though. I don't know if I'd actually trust him in the middle of the class like this, so... Uh, okay, so I have a laundry list of things I need to get. What are the odds that I have to fight an enemy? There are no enemies in this room, so I'm actually thinking... Well, okay. Oh, no, now there are enemies. Because you said wing bat, a wing of a bat, and there are no bats here. These guys deal a bit of damage, and there's three of them, but I think I can take them. I feel like the moment I can take people, the, the better. Um, so, controversy, controversy. Uh, a large group of people have uh, reacted to the I have now been purpled. I assume I'm going to take damage between turns. Uh, maybe. Um, a huge number of people have reacted to uh, Hogwarts Legacy funding JK Rowling for, uh, her, wow, 20 damage. Uh, they don't like her views. Now, you're within your own uh, prerogative? Is that the term I'm looking for? To buy the game or not. I'm personally not buying it because I just don't buy new games. That's just me. 
And it's been a month, okay? Like, uh, this, this is like 30 damage? Wow. It's been a while, so what I'm saying is not new, and if you're looking back on this video, I guess you'll kind of, you know, go, ah, okay, like this guy is saying the obvious. He's like, that was a crazy amount of damage. That was an absolutely crazy amount of damage. You like how I was like, oh, I could probably take him, and then, no, nah, not at all. Um, and the worst part is that, like, oh, it's not like I can buy equipment. Something that a lot of other RPGs, um, at least, it feels like they'd segment the, you know, like the challenge wouldn't jump up so high, but here it's just like, every room I go into, I don't know how strong these enemies are. Here is a giant spider who just dealt a quarter of my health in one go. I'm gonna hope he's weak to this. He, did, he wasn't too kind on it. Sometimes I take no damage. Oh my gosh, actually I could take him. I could take the giant spider. I feel good. Harry, please gain experience for this. 65 is actually pretty good. How much experience does it take for each level? I could- if I fought another spider, I'd just level up. I don't know if I'm gonna get another spider, though. I got a frog! I got a frog, interesting. Um... So, yeah. People were upset about that. How many? I don't know. But a lot of people who claim to be representative of a certain community, uh, were, um, you know, were upset. And that gives the impression, and I, I want to say this, that can give the impression to people that this certain group is, uh, perhaps, uh, overblowing this problem. Because they don't understand that what is going on. Uh, they, or rather, they don't understand why, like, the problem people are saying actually exists. They don't, they don't agree with the premise. And that's a big one, or it's like, if people don't actually, like, if you're wanting to arrange a boycott, sometimes people, you know, ignore your boycott because I'm just gonna get killed by spiders again. People ignore the boycott because they believe that the, the cause is unjust, they just don't really feel like, you know, they, they want to experience the game anyways, uh, sometimes it's out of spite, but I don't think a lot of people really do it out of spite. Um, but I would definitely say that, like, the explanations of why this game was, uh, bad or detrimental, like, why it's bad to, to fund J.K. Rowling, which I feel like is a bit misguided, because it's like, J.K. Rowling gets a lot of money, bro. She has- do you know how much money that stage play makes? Like, actually, like, tens of millions. This- this game is not the biggest thing in her portfolio, and that's one thing I'm confused about, is my timeline starts, like, very late January, early February. If we're really concerned about the things that J.K. Rowling puts her money towards, I don't know why in January 2023 <laughs> we're suddenly up in arms, unless it's because we play video games, and this is a video game. And we also don't play mo we don't play mobile games, and so that I then that is why I say perhaps this is a an ooh was that the horn I was looking for? Uh, that's why I say perhaps this is a, some opportune streamers basically complaining that this steals the attention from their streams because they I don't really know why they don't just join in on playing the game like which makes me think they actually believe the problems that they say and I think there's going to be some people who. Are, Legitimately, that is the reason. But sometimes, I don't know, like... I can't really say, like, oh, if you just hated JK Rowling... That doesn't really explain everything else that happened, or why now? It feels like you're just late to the party if you just hate JK Rowling. I don't know. Uh... So, anyways. So, people are now boycotting the game. And they're protesting it. And... You're gonna get reactions on Twitter, you're gonna get reactions on all these sites. That's okay. But this is the point where I start going, okay, something's up. Because a bunch of people played the game, uh, and I think the key thing to note is that the game was playable on February 7th. It technically was released on February 10th, but it did that early access release thing where if you pre-ordered the deluxe version of the game, you got to play it early. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, and especially it just muddies up when the game came out. But February 7th is the date people were playing the game. Specifically from February 7th onwards, um, there's a lot of 
accounts of people getting harassed for playing the game. Harassment might be a, you know, it's a nebulous term, because some people might consider a lot of things harassment, and some people might consider very few things harassment. Um, but I would definitely say there is a lot of unwarranted people saying, you are a bad person for playing the game, despite, as I said earlier, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you could be playing the game. Spite is probably not one of the most common reasons out there. I think there's a lot of, you know, if people want to know why you're playing the game, they just talk to you. And a lot of people just want to play it because they like Harry Potter. And I'm playing this because I like my old school, you know, video games. I kind of like Harry Potter, I guess. I wouldn't actively go out and buy a bunch of merchandise, but it's not something I absolutely hate as a franchise. It's a fun, it's a fun fantasy, you know, franchise was popular in the early 2000s. Like, that seems, that seems fun to me. Uh, and, uh, I guess 289 bucks, you get so much money. Like, I could buy so many chocolate frogs from this. I'm gonna, speaking of frogs, I'm gonna just get immediately yeeted by frog. Do you lose experience points? No, no, you're just gaining levels. May I just say the font in the top left? Props to them on that font right there. Um, so anyway, that is the point where I start going, okay, something's up. Because people are getting, you know, there are some people getting legitimately harassed over this. Particularly, there's a couple of large streamers, and I want to say exclusively female. Like, I don't want to, like, make broad generalizations, but I would definitely say the most affected group by this harassment or demographic are female streamers. And that rubs me the wrong way. I don't think that it's fair for, you know, the harassment to happen at all, and I especially don't think it's fair that it's obviously going after people who are a lot more... I mean, I, okay, I say female, but also particularly people who are um, fairly self-conscious. A lot of these streamers, like, there's a good number of them that broke down on stream crying. That's not good. That makes people hate the original reason of, you know, all this boycotting and uh, protesting to some degree. And to me, I kind of view, <laughs> view it at this point as like, this is a bit of lazy activism. They're going after these targets, thinking that they're creating an impact on the world, you know, doing good. But really, it's like, this is pretty moot because you're not gaining many people's attention. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're not gaining many people's favor. I'm just gonna get killed by a bunch of spiders again. You're not gaining many people's favor, and all you're doing is irritating people. So, that's, that's what I viewed that as. Now, one streamer, uh, who was fairly popular, and I know of him, uh, I'm gonna say no names, because I think, you know, I don't think people should be brought into this, like, or rather, I don't know. I'm gonna go name free for the moment, but a lot of, uh, there was one streamer in particular who's Japanese, but they stream in English sometimes, half the time, um, was planning to play the game. They hadn't even played it. Uh, they just had like the stream thumbnail and, and the time, and they got enough uh, heat on Twitter in particular to say, hey, you know what, I, I apologize, sorry, I'm gonna take a break, and they legit you know, were destroyed enough to not stream for a whole month. Uh, when they came back, uh, in the past week, and that's why this is a recent development as of me, what toilet did I just wander into? Uh, but, uh, this, this streamer, the first thing they say when they've come back from this long hiatus of not streaming is, I'm going to be retiring, or I'm going to be graduating, because they're part of a, of a, uh, a VTuber, um, you know, organization. And so you don't just quit, you graduate, where your identity is completely uh, assumed by the company, and you basically start afresh, with no one knowing who you were, unless people obviously know what you sound like, which, there's going to be some people who are like that. I at least defeated some more spiders, that is cool. I'm not really finding these items, but... What am I finding? The worst part is that I, I said hi to Snape, and all Snape did... What do the name tags do? 
I said hi to Snape, and all he did was deduct house points. So, the bicorn horn feels like something he would mention, but I don't quite recall what that was. Um, so, at this point, now, I, I will say, some people will say, oh, well, this streamer was planning to leave anyways. Uh, and, and it's like, oh, you're looking too much into the messaging. But I think you can 100% agree that this person was clearly attacked, like, disproportionately, not disproportionately, as in they never got, sorry, uh, how do I phrase this? Wow, there's a lot of these all over the place. They were attacked because they wanted to play this game. Is this a minigame? Oh my gosh, that's a minigame. It's a memory game. Do I get just infinite goes, or do I... Oh my gosh, Burning Man. Oh! Oh! Pro go. Pro go. So what do I get for doing it? Nothing. Can I just keep talking to you and you'll just give me new combinations? Oh, okay, cool. Cool, thanks. Oh, that's your trading rooms. This is your link cable trading rooms for some reason. I want to trade the slither- oh. Yeah, what? Okay, sure. Um... So at this point, I feel like, yeah, there's gonna be people super upset by this. Um... But I will also say, this has been a significant bit of time. Now, there's some people who... Reactionary said, Hey, you know what, in response to... People getting, you know harassed over the game, I'm gonna stream it. There's a bit of that. There is, like, obviously, there's just chains of events. There's people wanting to play the game purely because there's outrage. There's people, uh, you know, feeling like, oh, well, maybe there's a, there's a vacuum they can fill, and some of it is opportune, some of it is legitimately because they are showing a bit of compassion for the streamers who quit. But I will definitely say there's a lot of bad behavior going on. All of that bad behavior really needed to stop ages ago. And I worry that a lot of people were deflecting and saying, if you disagree with the bad behavior, you, like, you know, you are putting down the group that this bad behavior, oh, sorry, you are putting down the group that the activism is for. You are, like, and, and, and this is why it's, like, tough to really reason with, because it's like, I can find individual people who just, like, miss the mark, but you can easily just go, well, they don't represent us. Okay, but, like, why is it that there's, like, you know, more people saying that than not? And on top of that, why is this even a group to begin with? This doesn't feel like a group if there's all these people individually writing their own opinions. This just feels like a bunch of individuals, and a lot of them are protecting themselves under the group. That's the problem. So, one. Here's, here's my rules for no controversy, and I am trying to be as candid, not candid, I'm trying to be as, like, removed from what these groups are, because harassment is bad, no, it doesn't matter who you are, and there's obviously people who are reacting with harassment kind of stuff, those people need to stop, but I do believe, not, sorry, not but as in they get away with it, but as in like, let us focus on one thing right now. Let's start with that root cause. Let's start with the original people who went after streamers. Because going after streamers, I don't care who you are. Streamers don't deserve this negative attention, really, unless, you know, not even, not even unless. I don't think anyone really deserves this kind of treatment. It feels like, you know, people just deserve criticism, and that's it, if they do bad things. And if you disagree with them, you can tell your friends that you don't like them. And you can tell message boards that you don't like them. But don't tell them that they're terrible people just because, like, you know, it's it's not a great... It's not a... Like, I, I don't agree with the original premise. That was the problem, I guess. So to me, I just don't get it. I just see this as, like, straight-up bullying in a lot of cases. Some people are not bullying. But I think those people should obviously see that whoever they are... Defending themselves under, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of grouping yourself with them. 
So, there is a lot of money. I am sitting on... I'm loaded. I'm rich as. I am Harry Potter, richest guy in the world. Uh, I did slide in the Sphinx. I did slide in the Sphinx, no man. The Sphinx spot is a very bizarre secret. I don't know who put a who put a staircase in the Sphinx spot. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how to talk about drama like this uh, because uh, drama, you know, it gets people messy. So the best I can say is, if you spot harassment on the internet, uh, you don't have to call it out. Like, not engaging is perfectly fine. No matter what it even is, as well. You want to do some silent uh, curating as well. Mute people if you don't like what they're saying. Uh, just report it if you legitimately think it's actually bad behavior. And just kind of move on. Or screenshot it as well if you want to just like keep an archive. Uh, but preferably don't go after like people just because they say stupid stuff on the internet. Because there's a lot of people who say stupid stuff on the internet. Uh... There's going to be bad people doing stuff for whatever reason, against whatever group. And uh, I think the best thing to do is treat everyone on the internet as an individual. And uh, if you're really worried about the group, so much so that you uh, don't want to mention them at all by name on your stream, for example, uh, then you can take precaution and just kind of not engage anywhere near it. Because there's no... There is no real, you know, you don't win anything by trying to be a big warrior in a drama fight. Um, but I also do feel like, yeah, that people are upset. So, I don't know, I'm torn between two worlds, because I, on the one hand, I don't want to get involved, but on the other hand, it feels like this stuff does affect me, and it has affected me in the past quite directly. I have, uh, I've, I've been the target of, uh, several spree harasses, as I've referred to previously. Um, because they just go. If, if you just ignore them, they just disappear. So, it's really, really weird. Here's the Sphinx butt. No, no, not the Sphinx. It's not the Sphinx. It's not the Sphinx. It was like, um, like a harpy or something like that. It was, because it's got like a tail. I don't think it was on this floor, because it goes down to the dungeon as well, but yeah, I don't know where I'm going, so. Anyway, that's my QED on, um, on drama. I don't have a lot to say, because I think it's painfully obvious, it's grandstanding, um, in the sense of, like, I don't really feel like I've even said much, other than, like, we need to be looking into the root cause of this. And if you're upset at people, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the hospital. Pfft. I don't know why I'm wandering around here. I am getting so lost in this castle, though. I will say that. I've never played this game before. I know this is a secret. I'm trying to get ingredients for the potions as well. So to me, I'm just like, where am I going, exactly? Because I'm just getting witches and wizards cards everywhere. Snape's such a jerk! That's some amazing Latin. And there's a lot of just giant spiders, but as I wander more through the castle, I end up... Have you noticed that I'm just taking less damage? I will say, they've put in a lot of work making backgrounds for all of these, like, rooms I go into. But like, yeah, have you noticed that these spiders were dealing, like, 30 damage a couple of levels ago, and now it's just like... Oh, I'm just Seven. I'm suddenly able to, well, except when that happens, but I'm suddenly able to just, like, tank these uh, spiders a lot better than I was before. And that's without any equipment change, that's just going. Very interesting. So more importantly than drama, I want to uh, direct people towards something constructive. I want to direct people towards uh, this wonderful, um, album I listened to, uh, called, uh, In Rainbow Roads by a guy called On Forward. Uh, this guy has, I think he's actually, does he actually have 100,000 subs on YouTube? Um, and, uh, what this album is, it's, it's a, uh, 
a MIDI cover of the entirety of Radiohead's In Rainbows, except using the Mario 64 sound font. It is remarkably impressive just because of how consistent it is, but also because uh, how good the original compositions are and how well the interpretation is of turning into these Mario 64 instruments. You can really like feel, you know, the, the same spirit of the music while also kind of going, yeah, like these are Mario 64 sounds and I immediately recognize the Mario 64 sounds, but I get like this new context. It feels so magical and that album, you know, like Weird Fish is, is a peak song. I'll tell you that just normally. Uh, the rendition using the Mario 64 sound font is equally as, you know, mesmerizing and uh, I guess I'll, I'll say spiritual, but I might be using that term a bit kind of loosely, but um, definitely like it just feels like so grandiose. There's a bit of like, um, you know, and a lot of these like chiptune, com you know, conversions, uh, quite a bunch of them, including this break what the Nintendo 64 could do. So it's obviously just using uh, play as a kid, aka eight years old or so. I didn't know uh, English yet, I'm from Belgium, so we learned it around 12 years old. Uh, can you imagine how hard I got last year and in Pokemon, sold Pokemon because I was truly stuck with it and hated it so much with Harry Potter to be able to eventually figure out where to go. I, yeah, I, I feel like for the, so I never played this one, but I played the, um, the Game Boy Advance version of Prisoner of Azkaban, which is still by the same devs, they followed through. Uh, and just kind of made more games, and the... I guess it's a little easier to navigate because the camera's a bit more panned out. Here's the, the griffin butt. What is this exit? This, uh, yeah, this exit into a face statue. It's very weird. It's very weird. Um... And that one, I swear I needed, like, a game facts guide to understand where I was going. Hey, do these people... Not even moving. This griffin butt doesn't count though. I am so lost when it comes to the items I need though. This guy's telling me off for going to like into house oh sorry, into classrooms that are in session, but that okay. That wasn't Hold on, for reference, that was just like... Uh... Wait, what, what robe do I have? Oh, wait, yeah, these are... Okay. <laughs> that's not a comparison number, that's confusing. Um... Yeah, okay, I'm just holding on to boots, I guess. Gosh, yeah. Uh, this one, GBA of Harry Potter 2 and 4, and the PS1 of Harry Potter 1 and 2. I played the PS1, uh, one on my channel, um, Twitch deletes VODs, uh, so you're not gonna see it on Twitch, but on my YouTube channel I actually just played the PS1, uh, game. I'm doing a bit of a, a bit of a bit where I play through at least three versions of the game, and kind of just give them, like, a big compare and contrast. Uh, so this is, uh, the second game I've played. Um, and, uh, I hope to play the PC version afterwards. Because I think it'll be kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'd continue with the rest because 54 damage, what the heck. Um, I don't know if I'd continue continue with the rest because it's a lot of Harry Potter for people to take in. Um, but I definitely feel that was one whole damage. Um, I definitely feel that it's... Uh, like, there's something really interesting about, like, different game. I'm going to get killed by the spider. That was the perfect amount of damage to kill me. Thanks, spider. Okay, there's something gone wrong. There's something gone wrong here. Uh, Harry Potter Philosopher's Stone Game Facts. There's something wrong, because I'm wandering around this castle going, I got no clue what I am even doing. I mean, well, sorry, I know exactly what I'm doing, but like, where's the guidance this time? Okay. Get to potions class, find the ingredients for Snape. Exit the room where you came. Okay. Search the picture of a snake to find the boomslang skin. Exit the. Oh, I need boomslang skin, snake fangs, and beetle's eyes. I'm not even picking those items up yet. Go through the bottom. 
this actually is like this guy's giving very special instructions about like where these items are and i want to know that like I don't think anything in the game is telling me where these items actually are. At least with the previous things when I wandered around the castle, it was like, eh, <clears throat> you know, you'll probably find them here. Or like, this guy is on this floor. Or, you know, there were a lot of like, tips to at least kind of hint where I had to go. But I'm looking at these instructions going, like, this guy is just going to tell me about the griffin statues. And that guy is just walking in space. So, okay, I shall read out exactly what this guy has said. And I'll let you be the judge of whether these uh, instructions are... So, in this classroom, this is the potions class. What he says is... Immediately to the right, this is Snape's office. Search the picture. By the way, you're still fighting enemies that are gonna kill you in, like, two pops. I heard that each PS1... Sorry, each Harry Potter 1 game is different uh, by different devs. The PC, PS1... Game Boy Color, and GameCube, so the castle and the story quests are different per game. I think, uh, Tuna have... Tuna? Have one thing in common. They all have Flipendo. You are correct. They are all Flipendo's fan. And it's wonderful. I'm amazed that Flipendo isn't even, like, in the films, given that the, like... I mean, I understand... It has to be in the books, because otherwise, why would they be coming up with the spell? But, like... The films were obviously being made over time. Oh, look at that, that's one of the items I need. Interesting. Because I was going to say, Boonslang skin is there. What tells me that it's just in this pi picture? I guess it's a close one, but I didn't wander to this way. Also, the snakes were killing me immediately. This is a real snake skin. Wait a minute, a Boonslang is a snake. Oh, okay. Now exit the hall and go through the bottom doorway. This will take you to the entrance hall. Exit through the main doors at the bottom of the screen. Oh, he did tell me that Hagrid told me. Oh, they said Ah, yeah. yeah. I forgot Hagrid will tell you where to find things, but... Greenhouses. Northwest Hagrid's house. Southwest. Okay, I'm going... Kind of southwest, I guess. I will definitely say that, like, they have tried to provide- oh my gosh. Arr, what brings you out here during class time, Harry? Professor Snape sent me to look for potion ingredients, beetle's eyes, boomslang skin, and snake fangs. Arr, sometimes you can find some loose around the, the school grounds and stuff. Uh, something, uh, Snape has something in his office, so he's probably- he likes snakes. <laughs> what about snake fangs? Do you know anything about them? Well, Professor Sprout out by the greenhouses was having trouble driving off some snakes. Some of the fangs might be left behind. Thanks, Hagrid. You're welcome. I'd help you look, but I've been busy spraying beetles out back and I need a nap right now. <laughs> well, good thing beetles are the th third thing I need. Wait a minute, Hagrid. Said he was spraying beetles back here. He's a beetle. Oh, was that it? A sexy PS1, Hagrid. Hands down. Hands down. Nothing beats Sexy PS1 Hagrid. I don't know if I'd classify him as sexy, because I wouldn't, like... Sexy is like when you want to be with someone. Where it's like, I want to be Hagrid. He is everything I aspire to be in my life. Ten feet tall... ...and Welsh. <laughs> What's not to love? He's a wonderful character, I love him. Uh, okay, so I, I did the thing. I got the beetle's eyes, and I killed the snake co coincidentally at the same time. So, kind of interesting, it actually wasn't like that far, but it's also just like, yeah. I should have clicked on my head, I could have gone to Hagrid, but even then, like, guess where Snape's office was. There, I'm finished. Let's, let's see Snape take points away from me now. Six house points for finding the ingredients, but I'll deduct one since you took so long. Now hurry to your next class, unless you want to lose more house points. Thanks, Snape. 
Who's who's the middle two? Feels like Slytherin's on the far right. What is it? Oh, I guess Hufflepuff. I don't know why I was looking at the tops going like, oh, why does Hufflepuff ha not have yellow gems? Do they just run out of color? Who knows? Class list. You have collected the ingredients for Quetz by Snape. Someone tells you there's a new card combination available at the Wizard Card Collectors Club. Okay, cool. So now I, I have a class list. And now I have to just go to six different classes. I mean, I'd imagine Herbology and Broomflight are outside. Uh, the rest is uh, good luck guessing the floors. How about let's do a save. I'm going to keep wandering around just for a little bit more. Because I feel like I can make a little bit more progress. I worry that, uh... There we go. Yeah, like, I'm just thinking, like, probably every floor's got, like, a class going on. Harry Potter, thank goodness you're here. There's been an accident. A candle has been changed into a rabbit. That certainly sounds like an accident. It was a lit candle, and it escaped. I'm afraid it might set fires. I need someone to catch it, and I'm assigning you. How will I know the rabbit when I see it? It's purple! I bet it'll try and go outside. Good luck, Harry. Be careful you don't get burned. Oh, I'll... Do you have a rabbit? Do you have a rabbit? Do you have a rabbit, Harry? Did you put your name in the goblet of fire? <laughs> oh my gosh, hi there, hi there Dumbledore. Have you seen a purple rabbit? No, but I'd certainly like to. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Okay. Alright, so they said the rabbit is outside. Room flying outside, it's obviously in the room of fragile glass prices. Oh, yeah. It actually could be. It could be. No one Harry Potter logic. So, okay, here's the question. Did I just see it on the top left of my screen? That is a purple snail. That's not quite it, but sure. I think it's a bit painful how quickly you take damage in this game. Well, well sometimes you just don't take damage in the game. Uh, you're just high enough level. But, uh, like, I want to experiment what spells are good against certain enemies, and there's some enemies and it's just like, I'm just taking so much damage, I don't get the opportunity to know. And sometimes your spells miss. That gets a bit annoying. There's no party system in this game as well, is there? I'm just gonna be Harry, flinging spells at people and calling it, calling it a day, calling it as I see fit. You know what, we take out the snakes like that, so... But yeah, did I just see it up here? Yeah. That must be it. That was easy enough. Can I just do Herbology class here, or uh, is the game gonna be like, no, 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 you can't... You can't duck off and do Herbology class. You're doing Transfiguration class. <laughs> Fair call, to be honest. But, not running from fights. Oh yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of running from fights in RPGs, and especially, like, I I, I used to a lot when I was a, I was a wee young little chap, but I realized it's like, yeah, the whole point of most of these RPGs is that the playtest has played, like, a few, a few... They played through the game a few times, and they would just fight every time, and that's how they do the experience curves. Almost every time. Good job, Harry. I'm awarding 25 house points to Gryffindor, and you'll find a new spell transcribed in your spellbook. Thanks, bro. That is a lot of house points, but everyone else got a bunch of house points, so it doesn't really... Nah. Incendio also. People catch fire. A rumor of a new card combination. Okay, cool. Was that it? That was the whole Transfiguration class? That was the whole Transfiguration class. Wow. It was a lot quicker than I expected. But sure, okay. So I assume the next class is up the stairs. It's not in the leaky, the leaky walls. Um, yeah. I do remember in that Prisoner of Azkaban game, there was a huge brick wall uh, when um, you'd encounter the, the Whomping Willow near the, the end of the game. Um, and there's this really unfortunate part where you can save before you fight the Whomping Willow, 
and there's no other enemies for you to fight. So if you are not the right level, you effectively hardlock your save. That is a massive thing I want to kind of avoid. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, if, I, if I'm just fighting enemies and just building some levels, I feel like I'm doing my part. Oh, I could burn these snakes. What am I doing? Oh, we're not using cards. They're like, uh, Incendio. Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah, Incendio. It costs 8, but let's see how much damage it does. 46, that's a good amount. If I remember correctly, there was a form of multiplayer in this game, like with Pokemon. Yes! Yes, there is a trade mechanic. If there's one room I've been to, and it just has, like, it prompts you for trading. I assume it's because everyone's gonna be getting different cards in the game, and, and... My only issue is that the cards are all one-time use, and, uh... They don't feel like they do enough. Like, I, I don't understand how they work, and I don't have much opportunity to, to test them, really. Keep setting fire to all these boys. Flee, my spiders. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't hate the idea of like one-time use items, but it's just like, it's, it's a whole mechanic you don't get to play around with. Because you use it once, maybe you, you understand what it's actually doing, but then it's done. It's over. So... It's one of those uh, strategy guide kind of items, isn't it? You get a lot of them, though. I will say that, but, like, I'm just gonna look at my Folio Magi. I don't feel like I'm getting a very even amount of them. Like, there's some of these cards. I'm just gonna refer back to this one. I've gotten nine. And many of these, it's like, I've gotten eight of that one. Of, of, of Dumbledore cards. I've gotten... Like, so many of these. At some point, like, I'm just like, have I, like... Is there something I'm doing wrong? Putting all this work into all this art, but like I'm not getting like different cards. You can save them for later in the game. We don't have uh, MP. Yeah, that's what I feel like. It's like use them on the bosses that really, really need it. Oh, there's classes in here. Oh, hello, hello there. Uh, do I have to climb up the books, or can, can I say hi down here, or are you all the way back here? Hello, Professor Flitwick. Oh, for today's exercise, we'll charm a feather to make it float. As long as you're standing here, Harry. I'll pick you to demonstrate. You should have chosen me. I can almost make feathers float already. Ooh, you're a powerful wizard, all right. Look, you're making me roll my eyes. Okay. Now, Harry, duplicate my wand movements exactly. The rest of you watch carefully. Okay. Copy movements to levitate a series of objects. If you get the object to the right height, you can move on to a heavier object. If you make too many mistakes, I have to start over. Okay, uh... Okay, I copy the actions. I just down, right, up, up, left. Down, right, up, up, left. I was not expecting Simon Says. Down, right, up, up, left, down, left. Down, right, up, up, left, down, left. I'm happy. Now what? Okay, we're doing books. Up, left, right. Left. Okay. Up, left, right, left. How gnarly is this memorization gonna be? Up, left, right, left, up, left. Okay. Up, left, right, left, up, left. Up, left, right, left, up, left, down, down. Up, left, right, left, up, left. Down, down. 
Okay, here we go. Up, left, up, down, down. Up, left, up, down, down. Okay, okay, we're doing okay. Up, left, up, down, down, right, right. Up, left, up, down, down, right, right. Up, left, up, down, down, right, right, up, left. Okay. Up, left, up, down, down, right, right, up, left. Nine things! I gotta... They're, they're pushing it, because I feel like every time I do a, a, like a Simon Says kind of game, you replace the word one with dick in the movies. <laughs> it does. Harry is happy. He is a happy boy. Now, Harry never uses his wand in the first film. So, that, that's something. You completed the exercise perfectly, all right? Harry, 15 house points. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks for demonstrating a class. Here's the spell. Good work, Harry. You've done Gryffindor proud. Even I couldn't have done it as well. Okay. Just, just see ya. Completing the Charms lesson is added to your list of academic achievements. The school is buzzing with the news of new card combination. Cool. Isn't it weird that like both that and the cat didn't involve me actually fighting anything in order to do it? But sure. Okay. Alright, I'm thinking... There's gonna be... Hold on, there's gonna be someone. There's gonna be a boss at some point, right? I've only fought like two bosses. This is a library. It's got a staircase, that's how you know it's a pretty gnarly library. Because it goes through multiple floors. Uh, but... My bets are... There's a defense against the dark arts class on the third floor. Oh, oh, an icky thirsty on his way to class. Where's he going? I'm ignoring you, peeps. Then maybe I should give you something you can't ignore. Ah, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm just gonna class with a cold. Ugh. Ugh. You okay, Harry? You okay, Harry? You know I can remember curse? The counter curse. Thanks. So that's taking away health, right? I assume so. See ya, my bro, snowman. Have a good one. Uh, teacher, 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 I'm curse. Mr. Potter, are you ill? No, Peeves just cast a spell on me. I chew. I can't do it it's stuttering the whole time. The curse of the bogeys! Honk. Exactly. This calls for a special assignment I would usually give only to a more polished student. Since you're Harry Potter, what is it? Find the counter curse and hurry. Curse of the bogeys will make you weaker and weaker until you have to be put to bed. F find the counter curse. Find the counter curse. Is it just here? Hermione, you know where the counter curse is? Thanks Hermione, appreciate it. I'm just gonna die in school. I'm gonna get killed by a ghost. I'm gonna get killed by a ghost. Dumbledore, you gotta help me. First of all, let me learn how to remove the curse under. Honk. Ask Madam Prince in the library. The reference section covers counter curse. Okay. Cool. Well, at least the library is important, but unfortunately... I might have to fight my way through? Where is this person in this library? Who designed a library like this? Uh-oh, Red Harry. I'm just gonna get killed by a rat. I'm gonna get killed by multiple rats. Yep, yeah, nope. Killed by rat. Oh, but I still have the the boogers. I still have the boogers. Now I've got to figure out which floor was uh defense against the art the dark arts. 
Because imagine if, like, you're so low level you don't have enough health to, like, walk back to the library. That'd be kind of brutal. Yeah, okay, so it's just this floor. At least. But then, like, where in the library is this person hiding? Uh... Yeah. Other than that, I built another computer today. Not today, sorry, this last week. I, uh, I had my old parts from my old, uh, rig. The... my 9700K and it's 32 gigs of RAM and I'm like, yeah, let's turn it into a little server. Um... I do have a full-size ATX board though, so I went with a, uh, what was it, a Thermaltake Core G3 case. Which is a slim ATX case, as they advertise. It's basically, it's 140 or so millimeters wide. But it is large enough to fit a full ATX, uh, motherboard in there. And, uh, it's, it still is only for, like, SFX power supplies, but it's kind of neat and how it all works out. It also has, uh, two case fans on it, which makes it decently neat. Um, the downside is there is zero cable management room, so, uh, and it has side windows. So I can't even say, like, oh, well, you know, just, like, hide it all, because, like, this is, this is a window, I'm gonna see it. Or at least one side window, not the other one. <laughs> There's nothing to see on the other side. Um, so unfortunately my cable management is not particularly great. It could have also been better if I didn't go with a uh, non-modular power supply. I, I cheaped out, I went with just the cheapest thing because I knew I wanted to run it fairly just soft. Just low power, but just like it's doing stuff, sure. Um, uh, so... I also, yeah, I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, turn my, uh, I didn't, I didn't benchmark and I should've, but, uh, it's definitely accomplishing the things that I want, which is, I guess, good, but, uh, one thing I did was I, um, just turned off the, the turboing on the 9700K, so now the thing only runs at 3.6 gigahertz all core instead of the, um, 4.9 that it single core boosts to, I think it's 4.6 as it's all core boost, I could get it to... 4.9 on my, um, oh, hi there. No one is allowed in the restricted section. Okay, I'm gonna die. Thanks, bro. Gosh, like, I just don't want to fight now that Harry is constantly taking damage on the beat. Now I don't want to stop. Oh my gosh, this whole place just keeps going. Hi, yes. Hi, hi, yes, please, 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 please. I'm here to research how to remove a curse. I would usually refer to the updated Counter Curse Handbook 2nd Revised Edition, but it's been missing. Who has checked that honk? No one, it was either stolen or someone pulling a prank. I've even offered a reward for its return, and no honking in the library, please. Y you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Cool. So, it's not in the library then. It's, it's not in the library. And I'm gonna get killed by another rat. Gosh, that's that's cruel. This is cruel, I tell ya. Um, so yeah, so I'm running the 9700K on the 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 stock setting. There's no, or not even the stock, but like without the turbo configured. Um, but I am running it with the XMP on, just because it can. And uh, interestingly, the CPU is drawing 42 watts. Which makes it remarkably easy to, to cool with this wonderful passive cooler I got. I cannot tell you what the cooler was, but it's... Actually, I can. I probably can. If I, if I can dig through some emails while on stream, which is the safest activity to do. Uh... There I go, down again. I got a uh, Silverstone Argon AR11, low profile cooler. Uh, this cooler is pretty much, it's just like a, a very small, thin heatsink slab. Oh, alright, peeves, you've had your fun snort. Now, how do I get rid of this curse? Has the icky thirsty looked in the library? Yes, the icky, um, yes, I have. The right book isn't there. Chew. I don't have it now, not net right now anyway. Where could it be? Maybe a muggle is studying it. Uh, that sounds like Hermione studying it. Who would be upstairs? Dang it, Hermione. Just trying to like understand what it says, uh. Um. 
But yeah, it's it's basically like a, a, a cooler. It's probably about like two centimeters thick. It's not really that thick. And then another two and a half centimeters for a fan that's just like perfectly as large on top. Um, oh, looking for something to read. Where's the book piece? Reading such a bore. Try some TV and uh, okay. They have a TV in here? I mean, cool, I guess. Oh, heck yeah, they got TV. Uh, sure. What the heck did I just hear? Oh my gosh, there's a troll. What is troll weak to? Um, Wingardium Leviosa, I think. Or he could just punch me. He could just punch me in the end. Uh, it's not that one. Which one of these spells? We've done Wingardium, it didn't do anything. We've done Incendio, it doesn't do anything. I'm gonna do Verdamilius. One, still not doing anything. Don't tell me it's Flipendo, because he ain't, he ain't slouchy. It's probably Flipendo, isn't it? It's, it's Flipendo. Okay, it's the battle of who can spam Flipendo faster than he can punch me. Um... So, yeah, it, the fan is just kind of stapled on, so really the cooler just kind of has four, like, holes, or four pegs in it. And it just slides right into the, the, the mounting on the motherboard, like just the holes that are there, anyways. And then, uh, you just kind of screw wing caps on the, the bottom and call it a day. It's simple as, and it does the job. And, uh, I could probably push it a little more, um, but I'm also doing fairly alright with, uh, not even having my case fans on. I'm just rocking the CPU fan going. Um, and it's a decently nice and quiet machine because it's not really doing too much. The fan is on 10% and it's doing what I need. Um, because I'm not rocking it too hard and I don't really want it going too hard. It's unfortunately in a room people go in so I'm like, let's make it fairly quiet. Um, but other than that, I've been, you know, learning Ubuntu server, hosting some web services on it. Um, and, uh, trying to just kind of, you know, understand the little home setup a bit more. Uh, also, actually doing backups, like automated backups of things that are important. I do, I do backups of things, um, somewhat, and I work off my NAS, which does backups on its own, but it's like, I've never done it myself with, like, R-Sync, or, uh, I think, uh, R-Snapshot is the tool I'm using, which is a program that goes around R-Sync. Am I gonna get this guy? I think I will. He's still going. He's got a lot of health, this 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 fella. <laughs> Alright, I hope he had the book. At least I gained experience. Okay, he had the book. Can I just read the book? Uh oh, curse book, just read it. The curse is gone. Cool. Mucus ad nauseum, okay. Ah, love. Hate it. Don't want it. No love around here. Why was there a room in the TV? Why was there a troll in the room with the TV? Why did that happen? Why did any of that just happen, by the way? That character's gotta be in the books if he, uh has appeared in two of the games by now, and I can, I can guarantee that, that annoying ghost is just gonna appear in all of them, isn't he? Gosh, what floor am I on? Is this, is this the defense against the room room? No, I, oh gosh. Me getting lost in all these rooms, I swear. Is it down or was it up? I, I went down, so I'm gonna keep going down. Yeah, this looks like the floor now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Dumbledore. Feeling better, Harry? Yes, I found the counter curse destruction. Hold on, Harry! <laughs> Madam Pence will be happy to have that book back on the shelves. Oh, fine. Okay. I'll give it back to her. 
She's downstairs as well, there's no point, like, going on this floor yet. I say that knowing full well that there's a staircase, like, right there when I enter. Like, right there. Oh my gosh, the enemies, when they just appear right in front of you, or they're in, like, obnoxiously, like, way too close. It's a lot of that, there's a lot of that. So, yeah, this server is definitely exciting. Um, I don't exactly know, like, everything I've put on it, but uh, i got some mates who are playing Terraria on the server, and uh, they're having a good time, and it's something that they're like, hey, you know, I can post some long-form things. Also, running Terraria on Linux. Mega cursed. It does the job, but oh boy, I wanted to run it in Docker. And uh, unfortunately, the software has... Uh, as, well, it kind of asked for an interactive environment, and uh, I wasn't quite prepared to deal with that yet. So, I'm, as much as I use Docker at work, I'm still a bit of an infant in, like, understanding, like, how to even, like, get it to do the things I want. I'm learning it more and more. I'd definitely say just, like, practice setting up web services with it, and I'm, I don't know, like it or not, it kind of is the place where things are ending up. I found the counter code book. Where did you find this? Beeves had it hidden in the Muggle Studies classroom. I might have known it was Beeves. 25 house points to Gryffindor because you recovered and returned stolen library property. Go back to Defense Against Dark Arts class to complete your assignment. Oh, okay. Heck yeah! These house points just come in, bro. Then again, they kind of were pretty arbitrary anyways, so... Who knows. Uh, okay, so... I gotta go upstairs. Uh, so I'm gonna finish this defense against the, uh, the dark arts class and call it a call it a stream because we are two hours forty in, and I feel like I've accomplished a lot. And also, I feel like it's probably a good halfway point of maybe the game. You do a lot of these classes, and they just kind of go. No more honking. I see. I found the right book with the right counter curse, and I returned it to the library. Excellent work, Harry. Just what I expected. Ten house points to Gryffindor. He just gives me more house points. This is how this is called karma farming, right here. Was that it? That was the class. I missed the class. Cool, okay. So, uh... I get- oh, okay. I picked all the odd number classes. Um, anyway, I guess there's the even number classes to go, and then whatever else is left of this game, uh, we'll see. But I assume you kind of go down the hunt of finishing, you know, the story of actually going through it. Interesting game. Really interesting. Really, like, not was uh, what I was expecting. I was expecting more RPG, and this is remarkably a bit more adventuring and just kind of talking to people. So, uh, but definitely interesting game. So until next time, folks, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. So if you managed to stick with us all the way through, uh, you deserve a cookie. Um, but yeah, if you missed bits of this or you watched the end or something like that, you can always feel free to... Um, uh, just, you know, follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube where I stream every week on Mondays and I just re-upload immediately afterwards. There may be exclusive stuff, who knows. I'm thinking I need to probably bump up my, uh, my other socials a bit, but... Listen, out of, out of all the drama I said, uh, I don't make money really off YouTube. I make a little bit every, like, couple of years when I can actually cash it out. It's not really much, so... Uh, feel free to just enjoy and f anyways just stay safe uh, keep a keep a calm head uh, and uh, other than that enjoy your video games stay safe eat your greens don't stay up too late like I did it's not too late to be honest so have a good one everyone peace